This episode is powered by Anivia Pickleball. Based in the heart of Vancouver, BC, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, they have the paddle for you. I myself am currently using their Voltex Gen 3 Pro, which comes in both mid and lightweight. A big thank you for the team at Nanivia for taking a chance on me in this podcast. And for listeners of the podcast, if you enter A Gorman 15 at checkout, you get 15% off. Check out Anivia.com now. That's A G O R M A N 15 at checkout. On with the show. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. We had one heck of a weekend of games, but before we get to the CMPL, me and Victor played in a tournament the week before that in uh, Spruce Grove. So, Victor, how did you do? Um, Hi, everyone. Uh, I think you can hear from me. Not really good. (laughs) Well, anyway, it is what it is. is. Uh, So, uh, I'll start with myself. I played uh, for the second time I'm I'm playing to 4-0. Uh, the division we played the 35 plus uh we went unfortunately one and two with my partner uh L- lester lim uh we had a, a we have a very good start well actually not really good start actually we're down six zero on first game and then we just we just blew through 11 6 11 6 uh, uh, afterwards and we're playing actually uh, the first uh, opponent that we we're playing was uh our uh, final uh, opponent um, on our three five at the, the provincials last year, so uh, I'm I'm glad that I beat them. Um, and then um, after that, the, uh, the two subsequent matches wasn't that uh, that good. So the first, just uh, the second match we uh, we played, it, it was actually someone from your club or, or some some something like. Oh that. yeah, so you that, played uh, Chris, uh, Chris and Mike from my club. They're the other two uh, like four zero plus gentlemen aside from me and my club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably uh, is it the third, second, or third game? Probably third. No, sorry, third game. I think I played play, play uh, your uh, those was on your on my third game. So on my uh, on the uh, challengers bracket. So on the second match, unfortunately, uh, we didn't do well. Neither we lost first game eleven three. Second game we're down seven three. We came back all the way to nine nine, but we still lost uh, 11, 11, 9. We just figured out a little bit too late. Uh, what was the weakness of, of our uh, o- opponent and uh, we just did uh, uh, we were executing well until that uh, uh, 9 9 side out unfortunately so uh, this is a bummer and then third game we were, we're pretty pretty much up before the side out because it was one game to 15 we were pretty much up like 5-1 and then suddenly uh, we just got stuck and then we we keep keep on not not being able to make in, any any points uh, dur- during our our serve. So unfortunately, we lost again 15-10, uh, and that was uh, the folks that was uh, at, uh, that you 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 knew, and uh, is a is a is a bummer because uh, at the same time, uh, a couple of things I figured out is I could, we couldn't uh, came up to the kitchen. Uh, when we're serving we're just stuck uh, at the uh, at the back too way too long and then we just uh, not either i'm driving driving the ball long or either the, the third shot drop was too too high or either we just not able to make make the ball uh, drop into the into the kitchen so uh it is what it is uh, i kind of kind of let my partner down a, a, a little a little bit too i should have maybe change my tactic or uh uh just uh, maybe poaching a, a little little bit more but yeah is is lesson learned it is what it is <laughs> oh yeah those ones uh, uh, how about yours i think yeah you you won the bron- uh, bronze medal at least yes we did we um so i played in the men's three five um i was in like that um whatever it was five to 49 category now my partner is also from my club um daryl but he came down from the 55 category to play with me so 
Um, our first game, we ended up uh, playing against the team we ended up losing to in the bronze medal game. Um, and right away, they noticed that he had trouble with the speed ups. And obviously, coming down playing against a bunch of younger players, um, that's where that's where you notice the big difference from three five or four zero, um, like you know forty nine and under to three five four zero. 50 plus categories it's the speed difference um mainly is what i find and uh yeah daryl had a little bit of trouble with that so they started picking on him a bit i tried to assert myself a little bit more um into the match so we kept it semi-close but we ended up losing that dropping down to the b side our next two games we played really really well we won like you know 15 3 15 6 nice. to get ourselves into the bronze medal game and then we ended up playing the same team that we lost to and we got down 9-1 and then on the switch, um, when we switched courts, I walked over to Daryl and said, look, if they want to, they're, they keep initiating the speed up, how about, and we know it's coming, how about you initiate the speed up? Because Daryl's got actually pretty quick hands, but he's better when he's the one who starts the speed, the, the hand battle game. Mm -hmm. So he started doing that. He won a couple of hand battles with the one guy. So then they started hitting to me more. And then I was able to work my, um, my dinking strategies and stuff and get some shots. And we ended up coming all the way back and tying it at 13-13. And then, the, you know, like a net cord and then like a miss hit um, to finish it off. We ended up losing 15-13 in the bronze. But I was pretty happy with that uh, with that performance. Um, when I looked at the teams that finished the top of the, uh, of the bracket, those were the three teams that I've, when I looked at the brackets at, uh, before we even got in, I was like, okay, it should be these three teams at the top. And, and uh, not necessarily that particular order, but that's the three teams I thought should have been, you know, one, two, three, with it so there wasn't any major upsets from what i would um consider and normally like i would have wanted to play 4-0 but because it was daryl's force for a coming down into that division with me i was like i was like okay no we're not we're not going to go into 4-0 because like we would have ended up playing you and lester and <laughs> for, how, for how fast you guys are i don't think i don't think we would have been ready for that I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let you think you know that <laughs> no exactly yeah right so so like I, so I I I'm happy with myself for making that decision, saying no, let's play three five, um, and 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 see how we do. So we got the bronze. I'm happy with the podium finish. Anytime I go to a tournament, bare minimum for me is a podium finish, just because. <clears throat> and well, and you know, for me, it's a, it's minimum five hours for any possible tournament. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. if I'm doing a five hour there, and so ten hour round trip minimum, I at least want a podium finish. So. Got, got another medal, so I'm happy with that. Uh, unfortunately, me and Irene uh, were on the waiting list for the mix, and we didn't get in. Irene's uh, women's 4-5 plus division also got canceled because it was only her team that was in it. So instead of making the 4.0 division a 4.0 plus division and letting her and her partner play in that, they just canceled the division altogether. So Irene didn't play at all. She she uh, We played after um, I finished playing, we found an empty court, and we played with a couple of players who were still hanging around and played a couple matches but so she was just there as a cheerleader this time so uh she was a little annoyed with that because uh she loves to play but um yeah other than, other than that not too bad like um and i'll give a shout out to my uh my little club here in peace river like we have like 48 members um in the club and like we have a bunch of people on a wait list because we don't have enough space in the rec center where we play and then our out the outdoor courts is just whoever shows up because we don't actually have a thing with the town here mm -hmm. but so we don't have that many players who go to tournaments but uh we had we had a couple of people a couple of members of our club come to the tournament and everybody except for i think two teams medaled so i think we ended up having i think if you went with individual people getting medals we had 10 medals in total and that's not bad for a small little club out, um, up in the middle of nowhere. So uh, shout out to the the, the Mighty Peace uh, Club and all the members who uh, medaled in this event. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, what else, what else I want I want to say? Yeah, uh, one more thing. Yeah, but our our, our bracket was weird. Uh, if you if you uh, remember, like uh, we were supposed to have like the at least six team and then one team pull out unfortunately was uh, chris hartman because he has a tennis elbow and they should have done a round robin but they didn't do a round robin they, they just keep on doing that um as a double in elimination so it kind of, kind of uh, screw up a little bit our, uh, our bracket people were like uh we're not getting as much games as it was it was supposed to be but it is what it is what it is also um 
I'm just I'm just finding excuse how how, how I lost. I just uh, blaming Chris, uh, Chris Harmon. Yeah, yeah, I bring you, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> and, anyway, uh, yeah, and, and then I'll I'll just do a quick couple quick shout out to I'll yeah uh, quick shout out to my mom. Uh, my mom made made it to to win the, the mixed uh, 3.0. He uh, he played with uh, a new partner. Uh, uh, one one of his friends called him Beat. It was his first time his first time playing tournament. And um, though, and actually, actually, some people are saying because both both of them are they're not very tall, so people are say, are expecting to beat them. They're saying, oh, the, those are very old 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 people, even though they're sixty plus. They're saying, oh, they're old people. We're gonna beat them. And then they they smoked them eleven two eleven two. So uh, it was kind of kind of in, interesting. And they went undefeated basically. So pe people oh, wow. people go to them. Yeah, people were surprised at like, what what happened to them. So, but that uh, con big congratulations to my mom and uh, her uh, his partner, uh, her partner, and then uh, a couple of shout out also to our Edmonton uh, folks, uh, uh, Shea Cabell and uh, Jacob Bokowi. Both both of them won their mix and genders the uh, double. Um, just if you remember, probably a year, a year ago, they barely maybe make it to that 3.5 and now they're just dominating the, the field right away so you can see the the young folks are now dominating the the playing field so uh yeah me and Mary got out. out for us in provincials so because we're in the same division as them ouch <laughs> watch out but like i said though i think we're two and two against them so I, I i would love to see that as like the finals type of thing that's my yeah, goal. But, That's my goal, anyways, is to get is to get to the finals and hopefully play against them or play against another really good team. Mm -hmm. We got a deep, we got a deep pool in uh, at provincials. Yeah, it's not gonna be uh, it's not gonna be easy. There, there's a quite 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 a bit uh, of of uh, good teams in there, and um, I know I'm I I will, I'll be refing those. <laughs> Perfect. I expect lots of foot uh, lots of foot faults from Jacob. <laughs> sure. If I'm playing against him, call him as much as you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's gonna be my my evaluation, right? So so therefore, I, I I'm not gonna I I won't be able to, I won't be missing anything. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So let's move on to what everybody came for the, to this episode for. We had the CNPL Central split over the weekend, and I got to admit, Victor, there was. Like great matches all the way around. The teams all looked super, super even. There wasn't really like there was like one or two, like maybe like one game was a blowout, but not the entire the entire like match between the yeah. two between two teams. Like I think there was only one like four one or two four oh sweeps, and even those games were like 21 19, 21 20 mm -hmm. type of deal, right? Like I was I, um I thought like compared to the Eastern split, they, there was a lot more excitement in the games. Like the players had really adjusted and you saw a lot more chess matches going on. Yeah, there's a, the matches are much close, uh, closer. You can definitely see and you see most of the team now in, did employ uh, probably what they, they listen to our podcast, uh, uh, their, uh, <laughs> their, their subs, right? You can see they're, you, they're really utilizing their subs and then uh, doing some mixing matches, right? Yeah, and, and yeah, like you said, you could really notice it like, I think there was only what one two teams that didn't have a sub for everyone because I know the rush didn't have a male sub no and then the smash didn't have a female sub now we know the reason why they don't have a female sub is because of the injury mm -hmm. um yeah. but um and then the rush uh, yeah and the rush didn't have uh, I think uh, Joe wasn't available um for the weekend or I'm not sure what was up with that but um but yeah, everyone else seemed to have like the full six player roster and then they yeah, and they utilized it and you and you noticed it the second day like the teams where they were running a little short handed, you could see whatever gender that was start to tire out. Mm -hmm. It's like you're playing these high level competitive matches and I know like like even if you're putting the subs in right away, you're all, yeah, and some of these teams are playing like 10 matches. So say if if you were to play every single match and you're playing 10 so you're bare minimum playing 20, not counting if you go to tie break. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a lot at that level. Yeah. So like I, I really liked seeing the implementation of that. I saw some teams where depending on who they were playing was depending on who they deployed. Um and uh, and then oh yeah. So and actually before the uh, event even started, the Smash actually made a roster change. Uh they dropped um Daiho Ozawa and they added uh Darren. 
I'm going to butcher Darren's last name here. Haran Dan Wang. Um, so I don't know what happened with uh, Ozawa there, but because I know he wasn't at the um, at the Eastern split. Yeah, maybe maybe it was commitment issues, but yeah, they ended up dropping him and picking up Darren, and Darren did uh, come in for a couple games over the weekend. So, and especially with the Smash, where they had the issue with uh, Dalbier uh, having um, a tight back last event, it was good to see them utilize that. Yep, definitely. <laughs> Any any surprising uh, result you you you, you see uh, this uh, at, at this event? Um, I don't know about a su big surprise. Um, I was actually very impressed with the rushes play. I know they only went two and seven. Yep. But their games were so much closer, and there was so many games where they had the match, and then it just kind of slipped away. Um, there was quite a few games where they were the team at 20. The other team would have been at like say 17 or 18. And they had a couple of chance, they had a couple opportunities to finish it. And even if they would have won like one of those, that would have changed the whole di dynamic of how that the rest of that match went, right? So like I know there was a couple where Eugene and Jordan were the uh, were the mixed team. And there was, I think two or three times they got up like 20 to like say 17 mm -hmm. and then just couldn't close it out. Yeah. Um, I was also really impressed with Ava Weeks's debut. Um, yeah, shout out to Ava. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ava. Um, she was a little nervous that first game she went in, and you could see it, but um, I've played against Ava a lot. She's always been very, very steady, like a defensive partner. Like she's like the person who's gonna do the resets, do the she's not your powerhouse, like gonna slam the ball. She's gonna be that person who like resets the ball, can get into a long dinking match with people, right? Like it, and she's very, very good at that. So especially when she teamed up with Jordan. And then Jordan would take more, more, more almost like a 70 30 take mm -hmm. of the court. I thought that was a very, very effective team when um, when they were giving uh, Sophia. I think they won both of their women's uh, matchup, right? Yes, they did. Their women's. And, and that was the big thing with the rush is because they had their three women's and, um, and Ava did a good job coming in. They were more willing to go back to her, right? So they were able to give Jordan a rest, able to give Sophia a rest. Mm -hmm. So they were always fresh coming in. So, like, especially on day two, even though they didn't win a single uh, game, the women's team was always performing, and then the women were always performing in the mix. And even when they went to Dream Breakers, mm -hmm. right? And like, um, and I thought Eugene was a very good complementary player to how Brett Forsyth plays. Um, you and because and like, it's not that I I don't like how Joe plays. Joe and Brett are almost the same style of play. So once you, if a team figures out a weakness. They can exploit it on both players, whereas Eugene's a very spinny, finesse type player. Like he does have power shots that he does, but like I even heard, like even the commentators were saying, like, oh, lots of spin on that one. Oh, so much spin on that one. And as someone who's played against Eugene and with Eugene at um, the qualifying tournaments, he has an insane serve return uh, spin on his serve return. Mm -hmm. And you saw a couple, uh, you saw a couple players put that ball right into the net off of a serve return. Mm -hmm. yeah I did, right, I, so you see that too so yeah it, that that makes a makes a big difference especially you're make, making if you're able a, able to get those three points yeah exactly and i thought him and brett did a very good job of adjusting on the fly like they would start one game eugene on the left brett on the right then like five points in, they'd switch they call a timeout and they'd switch and then they call a timeout later in the match and switch back right like they were not afraid to say okay this isn't working right now let's switch up the sides and and adjust like i i thought they did a very good job and like their record wasn't indicative of how their games went like i think majority of the games even though they lost m most of their games um were all like you know 21 20 21 19 like i don't think there was very many games where they got really blown out like there was a couple maybe mixed matches where they're playing against like say like brett force uh, i'm sorry brad chapman and kim and it would have been against like say eugene and ava and so yeah, it's going to be like a twenty-one fifteen or twenty-one fourteen match, but like other than other than a couple of those, and they weren't, and they were very far and few between. I thought they did a very admirable job. I would love to see what they'd be able to do if they had all six, six players one. there. Mm -hmm. and, what yeah, I, and honestly, the way I would work that is, I would always have, I would um, like yeah, have Joe, Joe and Brett play together, but I would try to keep Eugene with one of them. All the way through, just because, like I said, Brett and Joe play a very, very similar style of game, mm -hmm. and like that's good if you want to, because and they're both you know fairly aggressive. They like their they like their power shots. They like their speed up shots, 
And so if you know you're playing against a team that likes to dink, yeah, maybe throw that in and try to overpower them really quick. But then if you're playing against a team that also likes to do that, then you throw Eugene in to throw some, you know, change ups in there. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that, right? So um okay, yeah, I might as well. So if for anyone uh who uh listened to our last one, so last time me and uh Victor kind of just watched everything and then we went from there. This time we made it a little bit easier on our brains. <laughs> yeah. I, took, I took four teams and watched all their games, and he took four teams and watched all their games. So I'll go through my four teams first. So the rush was one of my teams that I um that I watched. And like I said, um, I really liked uh, the utilization of Ava throughout the weekend. It uh, let Jordan rest. It let Sophia rest. Because, of course, they had the issue with Sophia getting injured at the last event. Or injured or sick. I'm not sure what it was. And then they had to bring in uh, Haley um, just as a last-minute pickup. Um, so, yeah. So, Ava did a very good job. Um, I've, I liked uh, when uh, Sophia was playing on the uh, right-hand side when she was playing with Jordan. She had a she utilized her uh, forehand roll shot down the line when she uh, when um, they would pull people over. She was she was painting that uh, that right hand line a lot <clears throat> through, especially throughout the first day. Um, I thought um, she made herself way more of a weapon. Um, whereas the, if you watch the um, the the Eastern split, she was getting picked on a little bit, and um, you could see it was still kind of an adjustment for playing that many other high level women. Mm-hmm. And I thought she did a lot better job this time of not just constantly going back and forth cross court with the other female, but, you know, going to the person in front of her, changing up her shots. Like, I thought she did a very good job. Um, Jordan played like she was um, possessed. Like, I thought she had an incredible an incredible weekend. Um, she was by far, if you were going to pick an MVP for each team, she'd be the MVP for the rush um, for the weekend. I know that's hard to do. Like, I know they went two and seven, but, like, I think they can walk away from this this split with their heads held a lot higher compared to the uh the eastern split the eastern split they kind of self-imploded they had injuries you could see they were getting tired this one um i thought they were competitive all the way through and even though they couldn't close out a couple matches like they close out one or two of those matches they're probably sitting at like a four and five record Mm -hmm. yeah it's just just, yeah it's just too bad yeah, but so that's stuff to work on. And hey, they already have a better, better like they're not going to get the worst, the worst record in the CMPL. I don't think anyone's going to beat last year's, uh, what was it, one and 15 or something like that? Or one, yeah, something quarter. like that. And we already know the rollers aren't doing that again this year because they have a way better team this year. But <laughs> speaking, yep. of, speaking of the rollers, I'll move on to them. Um, I was very impressed. Um, how well they were holding together, seeing how they were missing their top male player. Like Ryan Torrance, and like we had said on the previous podcast, um, wasn't there. Um, um, from what I heard from Thing, I think it was for a wedding, his wedding, I think. Um, if that's the case, con- once again, congratulations, Ryan. Um, but yeah, they finished the weekend five and five. So, you know, broke even, right? And that's that's kind of like when you're missing one of your top players, that's kind of the best the best uh, case scenario you can hope for, like unless you're going to pull like an insane amount of upsets. Mm -hmm. And I'll give a shout out to Corey. Corey played insanely well. And I know we give Corey a lot of crap for picking himself on a team that he owns, especially at the time during the draft when there were some very, very good players still available. But he showed, he showed up for this event. Like he played very, very well. He wasn't a detriment to the team. Like, yes, he's not Ryan Torrenson, but he held his own enough that they were able to come away with a five-five um, with the five-five split. Um, Matt played very well. Casey played re- really well. Um, they brought in Tara uh, Di Giuseppe um, this week, and this was her debut. And um, I wasn't sure what to expect when she first walked on the court. She's got really quick hands. I was really impressed with uh, when uh, people tried to get uh, start a hand battle with her. She was able to power that ball down very, very, very quickly. So that's a very, very good sub for Casey and Jess um, to give them a break. And the fact that uh, Tara was there and was being able to sub in and play well, you didn't see uh, Jess and Casey slow down, which was helpful because, you know, like you wanted them to get that women's win to at least make it a little bit easier for the team to maybe pull away with a win or at least force a tie break when you know that you don't have your best male team that you can send out there, right? So 
So yeah, so the rollers with that five and five with that five and five finish, they they uh, they drop down out of first, but they stay at second because they had such a good Eastern split, right? So um very impressed with how they played. Um and like like I said, the fact that they didn't have the whole team there. Um I'm I'm interested to see what happens at the Western split. If they if they can have all six players there, I think they might pull away again like they did in the Eastern split. Mm, I agree. Um, uh, I did also saw a couple of matches over there. I also thought that Matt uh, said did, did his job on holding, holding, holding the right as much as he, he needs it to. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and I was expecting that from him. He knew he would have to step up with Ryan not being there. And um, his once, as as usual, his drives are awesome. His two handed drives. Um, he was catching a lot of players with that. And um, I like the fact that they didn't just keep him and Casey together. They were rotating like. Because the first thing I thought was like, okay, you keep Casey and Matt together because that was the one of the the teams from the East, and have Corey go and have Corey go with Jess. But they they did rotate him around with Jess, rotate him around. I don't think he ever played with Tara, but he was always if Tara was subbing in for Jess or Casey, he was going to play with the other one, right? Mm-hmm. To try and at least pull away a a mix win to a bare minimum, so you go to like two and two into the tiebreak, and then all of their players are actually pretty pretty good. In the time and when they go to those dream breakers, like <laughs> Corey held his own, um, pretty well. Matt's already an insanely good singles player. Mm-hmm. Jess, Jess is uh, Jess is very, very good, and Casey's very, very good. I don't know if Tara played in one, I don't think Tara played in one where they went to a no, I haven't seen Tara uh, actually. Yeah, so but I'm assuming looking at how she plays, I'm assuming she has some type of tennis or badminton background. Um, so I'm thinking she'd probably be pretty good at singles. Uh, regardless if it came down to that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, then if we move on to the pronghorns, I think Emily was sick. Um, yes, I, I, looks, I, I agree with uh, this assessment. Yeah, I don't know if she, yeah, I don't know if she's injured or sick, but she looked very, very kind of lethargic um that first day. She played every game the the first day with Kim and they and she seemed very, very, very tentative and just like a little sluggish with her movements. Um, and you could see that in some of the outcomes of some of the games they were playing in. Um, and then on uh, day two, Caitlin Soroka played, uh, I think, every game except for one. So yep. out of the out of the five games they played, I think Caitlin played uh, four. And uh, Caitlin did a, did a good job. You could see there was a few times where she kind of stressed herself out a little bit, and she'd start making un, uncanny mistakes. Mm-hmm. But then there was other, then there was other times though she was solid as rock. And I've played with Caitlin and against Caitlin a couple of times. And and it's kind of the same thing as how I say Ava is. Caitlin's not going to be the powerhouse hitter. She's going to be the person who can reset, 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 dink yep. with you until you make a mistake. <clears throat> and when she was going in and when she was doing that, that's when she was very, very effective and it allowed Kim to be a little bit more of a powerhouse. Now, I think that's one of the things with the uh, with the pronghorns, though, is that all three of their women are not very powerhousey. You know what I mean? Like they're all very, very good defensively. They're all very, very good at playing the chess match dinking game. Mm-hmm. Nobody really has what I would call like, like if you if you pop it up, none of them really have what you would call finishing slam power, right? Like if you pop if you pop it up to say like if you, if we if we want to use Nathan Choi for example, if you pop it up to Nathan, you know the point's pretty much over. Yeah, you get smash, get right? And same thing. Like if you pop it up to say. um I'm trying to think Casey Rogers, you know, it's almost as if it's not over, you're going to maybe get it back one more time and then she's going to finish it. I don't think there's really anyone on the pronghorns for the female side that has that kind of finish. They're all more kind of precision reset players. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but uh, like I said, like you could, uh, they and like the first day they went two and three, then they went three and two the second day. Uh, the other thing I will note is that I think Michael McCaffrey is going to steal Jeff Elwood's start spot. Hmm. Okay. When you watch when you watch the matches, um, and I think it's more it's not that he's pl- necessarily playing a, a, a bunch of times better. It's that I think him and Brad have a better chemistry of how they play. I see a lot more um, like middle miscues or um, like. Miss, I see a lot more miscues when Jeff and Brad play together than I do when Michael and Brad play together, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, like, and Michael almost feeds off of how Brad plays because we all we know that Brad is very, you know, 
he's gonna he's he's got it he he has power but he's gonna do his resets he's gonna dink the crap out of you he's gonna you know methodically kind of pick you apart Definitely. and i find when michael play when michael plays with brad michael kind of turns into that and then he'll throw in his little bits of power when he needs to but every time they've played montreal michael's in because that seems to how they've been able to counteract lc and um ernesto's power is that they turn they slow the game down they turn it into a dinking game and they just outwork them i think they won like 21 14 wow or something, or something when they play when they played uh montreal right so um if i if depending on who they would have like once we get to like championship weekend depending on who they have to play i'm at this point i'm probably going with michael with brad just because i'm just seeing the from what i'm seeing now i don't i obviously I, I haven't been to any of these events in person yet but from what i'm seeing on the screen it looks like there's just better communication and better better chemistry with the way that the two of them play I, it's probably how the, the styles because we know that Jeff is a lot more of a drive, you know, speed the ball up type of player. And normally you would think that combination with how Brad plays would normally go well, because then you have your speed up person, you have your reset person. But yep. I don't know what it is. There's just something with how Brad and Jeff play, uh, play together. I see a lot more miscues. Right. And there's like, it's like stuff in the middle. Um, they both go for and then falls in between or one of them ends up mishitting it. Or um, Jeff will start a speed up, and then Brad gets caught, kind of trying to overcompensate because they get into trouble, and things like that. So um, now, like I think Jeff and Michael didn't didn't play together this weekend, but I know the previous uh, split they did, and uh, and they they did they did a fine a fine job playing playing together. So maybe if you want to give Brad a break, you stick the two of them in like that. But like right, right now for my money's worth, like if I had to say, okay, you're playing against Montreal in the playoffs, you're sticking Michael in. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, and then other than that, like I, you saw actually a little bit of emotion, uh, more emotion out of Brad this weekend. There was, um, and it was more so yep. he was frustrated that he wasn't finishing the match quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't. I want to say it was against Mon Montreal in the mix, especially, or it might have been against the Brewers. No, I think, I think it's, against, a, it's the Brewers. I think yeah, it was the, the it was it was the Brewers. Um, like they they won they won the mix match him and Cam, but he even tossed his paddle. Um, when he scored the when he scored like the 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 game points, because you could see he was getting frustrated. Like like him and Cam should have finished it like five rallies ago. Like it wasn't that they weren't winning; it was that he thought. I think you could tell he thought um, the match should have been over. And I know I think they played the Brewers twice. Maybe um, I can't remember. I, I'd have to double check. I, 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 this, right? So yeah. Well, and, and then there was a like I, there was a few teams who played each other twice over the weekend. Um, and there was a couple like and, and uh, me and, and we'll both we'll point this out right now. A couple teams played nine games, and a couple teams played ten games. So I think there was. Four played ten and four played nine, so I, I got a feeling come Western split that'll flip. Yeah, type of and, thing. And, but um, I know that, against the Brewers, there was one or two line calls that Brad was a little pissed off with. <laughs> now I tried to look at the re uh, tried to slow down the camera and look at the replay, but just the camera angle didn't didn't allow me to. Uh, did you see? Did you see that match, Victor? Yeah, I did see that match. Uh, it's tough to call, especially. Um, with the ref actually just uh there it's not their primary responsibility yeah. that as first first of all and the, the those are too tight and it, it probably it, it was me i probably not going to overrule it because that yeah. those are a little little tight so um i, I will say maybe they, they should invest into some some line uh line call cameras or line line judges yeah. whatever whatever but well uh, when and i know the one that pissed brad off the most was the atp one yeah uh, and That's and like i said short, like, I, like, uh, you know what? Just like i said i tried to slow ball. it down but because of the camera angle they were using like you can't you can't see from the camera angle so yeah, and that's going to be even tougher for the ref because Brad's coming around and hitting right beside you right? yeah so, there's no there's no way the ref can see that one oh right so and then there was like a call almost um, two rallies after that where same thing they got they got mad about it so but um but no yeah like they finished five and five um i think there was and i think if they would have probably subbed caitlin in a little bit quicker on day one realizing how 
how affected Emma was, whether, like I said, whether it was from a sickness or an injury, I'm not sure what it was. Um, I think they probably could have salvaged one or two games out of that. Um, but uh, then again, like we said, we don't, we, we're not hearing the conversations between teammates and stuff or, or f- from coaches. Um, so we're not sure how that, uh, how those conversations were going. But like, like I said, just from viewing, viewing those games that first day, you could tell that Emma wasn't herself. Yeah, definitely. She, she was definitely something was bothering her. Yeah. All right. So f- my final team. So I had the Wolverines. So, um, Wolverines started off pretty good day one. They went three and two, but then they went one and three on the yeah. day. And I almost think this was, you know how, and we, cause we were saying that, you know, it was nice to see the teams utilize all their subs. I think the Wolverines made the mistake of over utilizing and not sticking with what was working. Mm-hmm. I, right. I do agree. I, I do agree with what you said. I think there's just too much experimenting. They don't uh, like uh, either, either they don't know what's going on. And anyway, yeah, because um, yeah, because like and like I said at the last for the last event, I thought Sabrina Lamb has established herself as their number one female, mm-hmm. and that that held true for um, for this weekend as well. Now they did have Natalie and. Um, why am I blanking on names? And Sarah play a couple matches together and have um, Sabrina sit. Now, both of them are left-handed players, and they actually gave Kim, Leighton, and Christina Chin a decent push. Like, I think the match went to, I think Kim and uh, Christina won 21-20 or whatever it was. And I think the double lefty thing kind of messed them up a little bit. Um, but, um, and but the one thing I did notice is that Sarah, especially the first day, was having trouble with her serve. I don't know how many serves she put out. Um, and then and and especially at rally scoring, you're just giving away free points for that. So I don't know if it was like a crisis of confidence or something, but uh, that first day she was definitely having issues with it. Um, I thought Natalie played really really good that first that first day. She was making some really good drive shots. If it went to a tiebreaker, she was pretty much winning majority of the the uh, splits against whoever her female opponent was, and that's her tennis background coming in because she's got an insanely good two-handed uh, hit. But, um, yeah, I think with the Wolverines, because, like, we saw them play... Like, they, they they matched their record from the previous, from the previous uh, split, but from what I was seeing, I think it's just inconsistently... Like, like you've, you've experimented everyone playing with everyone now. I think you now need to pick... Okay, this is our starting lineup. And then depending on who we're playing, we'll sub these other players in. You know what I mean? It was almost like nobody could get warm. Like aside, like aside from Sabrina, who played majority of the matches, I think she only didn't. I think out of the, the nine they played, she didn't play two. Whereas like you know, Joel sat for at least two or three. Hado sat for at least two or three. Jonas sat for at least two or three. Same with like Natalie and Sarah. Like everyone else, it seemed like you couldn't get a flow going. Mm. So I think that's the biggest issue with the Wolverines right now is that we know that their men's team is really strong. We know that Sabrina playing with either Hato or Joel or even Jonas is a, is a really strong pairing. Now it's figuring out, okay, are we sticking, depending on who we're playing, are we sticking Natalie with, uh, say, Joel? Are we sticking uh, Sarah with Joel? Are we sticking Natalie with Jonas or whatever? You know what I mean? But they, they need to kind of do, they need to kind of say, okay, if we're playing this team, this is who's playing. If we're playing this team, this is who playing. Like they need to kind of come up with a concise. This is who. This is who's starting. Like we already know it's going to be Hato and Joel for men's. Like Jonas is a very good third male player. But come championship weekend, like let's be honest, it's going to be Hato and Joel. Oh yeah. Right. So, um. So yeah. So I think my my the biggest fault with the Wolverines I can see is like yeah too much experimentation. Um. F- find what's working and kind of stick with it and then use their use the subs as you need to agree yeah all, all right. right so your team's victor i go for a little bit of my assessment uh i probably go for brewer first that's the one i for some reason that's the least i was able to watch for some reason maybe i i, I missed that steam at one of the streams but uh in, anyway they still went went five uh five and four so which is pretty good uh mark uh, mark uh, clemenson was uh was the one that that actually i, I felt that he he won he he 
he had actually hold it together for uh, for for the team. Uh, the the the, the, wo the women are, are are solid, but Mark did did most of the time he did the job for uh, for 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 the, for the team. Not uh, not saying that Kyle uh, Kyle's not not do, do doing anything, but uh, he uh, he he was he was the one that uh, makes every everything happen. So. Um, Good, good to see they still able to to manage, even though they they have that as a disadvantage. But um, so, I, I was I will say ha, ha, they just gonna make sure that Mark is, is gonna stay healthy, because if you lose Mark and if you have someone to sub sub, sub Mark, and then you can really see whoops, the the Brewers now is, is struggling big time. Yeah, I think the one game I saw where Mark did sit out where they had Mikhail play with Kyle, I think they got uh, beat up pretty handily. I think it was against the Smash. Um, I'm, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. but like, it, And it wasn't like they were – and beat up pretty handily isn't a good word for it. I want to say it was still like 21-17. But the other team looked like in control the whole time mm -hmm. type of thing. And, yeah, like when Mark plays with, uh, with whoever he's playing with, the, the other team is like visually avoiding Mark. Yes. Like I know when they played against there's no, the there's no ball mark mark oh, oh yeah mark yeah they're not giving mark anything like they're trying very hard like I think when mark was playing I think it was mark and Mikel versus I think Brad and uh Michael against the on the pronghorns I want to say and mark almost ended up playing 90 10 with Mikel not because Mikel was playing bad but just so he could assert himself into the game because like they were hitting everything to Mikel oh yeah so yeah I I, get, uh, I, I was I will say yeah the, the, that's good on on them, but at the same time, on the long on the long run, they still have to f figure out who who's going to be able to support um, uh, Mark. So it's not putting every pressure to him. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's uh, that's will be my assessment on 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 the uh, Brewers. So now go uh, goes the easier one for <laughs> the Lions. The Lions went seven and three. Well, there's a reason why they're seven and three. Because they have Ernesto in there, and and Ernesto was like basically most of the time I would say he's what like basically one step up above e almost everyone else, and you can really see see it on 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 the play either in mix or either in men's. People are avoiding same same as uh, a little bit uh, like the Brewers. They have been avoiding uh, Ernesto. Every ball was avoiding him, but as soon as he inserted himself, point is over. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get 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 over over him. I'm. I'm. Did I? I was surprised the the fee, female did uh, did their their job though. The the uh, the fee, female really uh, did well. Like and and Sophie and 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 them. They did. I think when they play against uh, the Prong Hong, Kim did have a quite quite difficulty uh, uh, playing against them. I, I because because they don't know that uh, how how they're probably they don't know how they're playing. They never. They, they, they haven't played that that much and probably also the, the way they, they they have they've been a little bit more of not like uh, Kristen Christina Chin or uh, or Kim Layton offensive but they they have been a little bit um, more offensive than a usual uh, female pairing so that's uh, that that's I think surprised most of, of the team okay why why they're so so offensive what's what's going on and then and then that probably won, won them uh, a lot of the games because they don't they didn't have much uh dream breaker most of them is either it finished in three and one so yeah exactly and i and i same thing i noticed that when they were playing the teams i was watching that they're um so yeah because i know we i know when we when the season started we said like the big question mark was their female players um they've clearly been in the gym working because i thought their uh their soft game had improved a crap ton um, cause they, they both, they both, both, um, um, and Sophie and Jay Cassandra, um, who are the two kind of starters, uh, for them. Um, they were both very drive, drive or banger heavy, um, at the mm -hmm. last event, whereas this time they were mixing it up a lot better. Mm -hmm. I thought they were, they were getting into good long dink matches. Then they would speed it up when they thought they had the chance to speed it up. Like, yes, they still weren't beating like Kim Layton and Christina Chin or like say, uh, Jessica and Casey. Um, which are like those, you know, if we're going to say the top female teams, those are the two top female teams, but like everyone, and they, they were still having a good fight with them. I just want to say they were still like 21, 19 
mm-hmm. type matches. But they're, they're definitely not too far behind those. Uh, no, they're not. They're they're, they're 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 they've made themselves now right on par with all the other female te- female pairings. Exactly. So now, so now have, it's like you, yeah, now you have Ernesto and LC like like majority of the time taking out most of the men's teams, and now the women are now that hey, it's a 50-50 toss whether or not they're going to win or not. Right, exactly. it's not like okay, we might have to make up for our women losing on the mixed side. Now it's like no, the women have like that chance to beat anyone, right? So now, if, like if they play the women's and then the men's, and then all of a sudden they're up two nothing, like That's they're almost pressure. Like they're almost like the pressure's on the other team now. And with uh, for how good Ernesto plays in mix, it's very very hard to steal two mixed matches from the from the Lions. Mm-hmm, exactly. So. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely uh, prop, uh, props to them uh, for playing that well. Um, and then we have United. I don't know—is it uh, one of the disappointment, or I don't know how what 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 I can say about about that. Um, I, I have a feeling Matt Kawamoto didn't play that much. Um, uh, this, he, he was yeah, subbing in and out, in 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 and out. Also, is he? I, I have a feeling United didn't really utilizing him enough in, in in into the matches even though their record wasn't that bad I, i'm not saying that their rec- record went that bad but he could have went much better than this and you and i have a feeling when matt is not playing with uh with mark uh, goffrey uh, chris is not like really on par uh with uh, like um, matt's level like chris will get really rattled unfortunately when he, when he gets rattled Matches over. He, he's gonna dump every 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 ball uh, in any anywhere else, and he has unfortunately that tendency of of uh, of do doing it. So that cost them a couple couple of times that that match that when they're actually on par or even leading, they they lost because because uh, uh, Chris would get get rattled on him, uh, on, on himself. Now on on the uh, on the women's uh, women's side of, of obviously she uh, they have they have some new f- females so see uh, C- uh, I don't want to butcher the name but C- uh, they have C- Carolina and uh, Joanna. I I will say they they have one of the unfortunately weakest uh, uh, woman pairing because they they yes there's not a lot of matches they are losing a a, a lot but they, you can say see their dynamic. The way they think they have their uh, shot selection, they're not at, uh, as um, good on par compared to the uh, other female teams. Like they're still like kind of struggling, trying to find their, find their rhythm. Oh, am I? Who's driving? Who's 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 the dominant uh, a dominating female uh, female is going to be there? Who who's the alpha? Oh, who's going to be the resetting? Oh, uh, what make, uh, who's taking that 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 middle? So they they have to really figure out like uh, quickly on the next, I would say on the next uh, next split because right right now people are really uh, be hammering on 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 them on the female side because they knew oh you you you, you ladies are new we gonna go go hammer you on on that point. Yeah, and that's one of the things with unfortunately the Hannah Blatt thing that happened, whereas they thought she would be able to play and then she wasn't. Mm-hmm. So I think if I think if they would have known before the draft that Hannah wasn't going to be able to play, I don't know if they may have, if they would have re-signed everybody. Yeah, I think they might. I think they might have maybe like say kept Matt, and then like okay, well we're going to use like we might and they still might have like kind of like how the rollers did. They still re-signed Jessica. Like I think I think they might have still gone back to Mark and Carolina. But use that second draft slot to try to get a higher ranked female. Because mm-hmm. right, because right now I don't know if they with Hannah gone like you kind of wanted Carolina to step in and be like the alpha female type of thing, right? Because like she and like she has the ability to like do hard drives and make good shots and stuff like that. Because you saw like when she, like she was the one who scored the finishing point in the mm-hmm. championship series, right? Like she, we know she can play at that level. But right now, with Joanna and uh, Sia, I, th- I want to say that's how you s- or Sina. Uh, yeah, Sina. What's that? I, sorry, and I, I apologize. If I'm, I apologize <laughs> sorry about butchering. I'm butchering. <laughs> I'm, like w- once I hear it out loud, then I'm good. But until until then, I'm just trying to pronounce phonetically, and I'm horrible at that. Um, yeah, they need one of them to. They need one of them to step up and be like, okay, when I play, and thing, and with Carolina being left-handed, I think it messes them up. 
messes them up as well. If you're not used to playing with a left-hander and you're stacking, both of you have a paddle in the middle. But you still yeah. have to say, okay, one of us still, still, has, to to take, still, st still has to take the middle more often than the other. Mm -hmm. Like, and like people don't realize when like when, when you watch uh and and pros like the worst one to like I, not the worst one to watch but it's the worst one to watch if you're just learning how to play um because it's always the guy taking it or it's always they always say that you know forehand gets the ball i'm like well yes in certain situations forehand gets the ball but we're, they're talking more so on like balls coming forward front not coming from the side like if it's coming from the one side well technically forehand's covering the line then so yes the backhand is getting the middle then but with both of with and this is as someone who's played with a lefty before you kind of have to establish okay i'm going to take all of this except for when it's coming from here type of thing or you're going to take all this except for when it's coming from here type of thing like so i don't think they've established that yet like they basically have to they have to go to carolina and say okay carolina we want you to take do 60 40 or whatever no matter no matter if you're playing with joanna no matter if you're playing with uh Sina, um you take 60 they take 40 because you one you've got the experience and two you also like carolina's got an insanely good drive and an insanely good forehand shot yes right so That's like you, she has the power so because she has the power she needs to be the power player and the other two need to follow suit and not, and i'm not saying they have to be the reset but you have to be like the one they're ready if carolina speeds up you got to be ready for that ball to come back oh yeah like she needs to be, she need to insert herself basically yeah and it's kind of like when like when you and me played a couple of games together it's like okay i i know if if victor's about to hammer the ball i gotta get i have to be ready for a possible reset same thing if victor sees me hammering the ball he's got to get ready for a possible reset type of thing like that right and like when me and victor played victor took the left i took the right so yeah victor's gonna take the middle on most shots unless it's like you know he's on the he's on the base on the sideline and then i got that middle with my backhand flick but aside from that no i'm letting victor take those middle shots because it's his forehand and victor's got a very powerful forehand right mm -hmm. it's not saying that i don't have one but in that specific dynamic i need to be a little bit more of a defensive player and the reset person just because that's how we're playing yeah right and, so and, and, and that's that's too bad for them right they they suddenly have to figure out to find uh find a new 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 uh new female they kind of uh at the same time i have a feeling that we just set them back a little bit from one split they they basically like have the female are actually playing on like uh eastern split basically instead of a, a central split because they have to figure out okay what am i gonna do now i don't know what what's going on yeah exactly right so it's it's one of those it's one of those things where it's like okay we need carolina you need like needs to assert herself as like the, the head honcho for the females and then whoever blends the best with that is the one who gets kind of like the starting spot and the other person becomes the sub mm -hmm. and then on the guys yeah i noticed that matthew wasn't playing as much i don't know if he's injured sick or if they're just giving or if they're trying to see if they can get chris's confidence up well, they, uh, not, another thing I think uh, what happened last year, Matt has a concussion. Maybe he he has some some concussion symptoms again, and then uh, he he just wants to take take some more caution. Uh, after yeah, well, yeah. One, well, and I know that's why he got picked so late because he had taken an entire year off from from concussion um, from a concussion, and then he had those concussion like syndromes at the uh, Western split. Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm wondering I'm wondering if they're playing if they're trying to be cautious with it until they get to championship weekend. And then it's like, okay, Matthew and Mark go, or Matthew and Chris go, like whichever one of Mark or Chris kind of takes that spot. Cause like Mark's been very like Mark was very hot and cold, has, has been very hot and cold. Like I know at the Eastern split he was he was not playing well. Mm -hmm. And Chris came in and played very well, but then this week then this weekend Chris wasn't yeah, Chris yeah, was, yeah, was it. Mark was playing very well, right? So it was just like yeah. It's kind of like I know it's kind of Mark's spot to lose and Chris's spot to try and take, but right now they've both had one good weekend, one bad weekend. So it's like, okay, well, come down, come into the Western split. One of you has to say, okay, no, this second spot beside Matt is mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because auto, otherwise they they'll they'll suffer uh, because because of it. If you can rely on on uh, Matt uh, be, uh, being healthy, then one of the two has to either step up or at least hold the ground. 
And then last one, we have the uh, the smash. I would say that was interesting. Uh, they did well. They did six uh, six and four. Um, I, I was a little um, surprised on some of their, their dynamics sometimes. So they they sometimes put put Christina in uh, in the left instead of uh, Kim being being uh, normally on the on the left. And uh, also when I think when Nate is either Nathan or the uh, bear was playing. Kim was on on the left compared compared to to be on on the right, so that that, that was kind of an interesting uh, experiment that, that they did on on there. So they they can they can see how uh, how, how that uh, that dynamic is uh, go is going. So I, I I did like what they they did, and well, the result did did just show that that worked out because some of the, the team was like, oh, okay, who am I hitting at that right now? Because now I have, I have Kim in front of me. <laughs> so you're like, uh oh, am I gonna hit it at Kim? So I know I can't hit it to, to, to Kim, so I'm gonna give it to Christina, but you give it to Christina, same thing's gonna happen. <laughs> so they, they're, they're a little bit kind of stuck or vice versa now, okay. Yeah, okay, it, it makes you like, oh, the, now the female have to buy, battle battle in front instead of battle, battling cross court. So it makes it makes it a little that dynamic pretty 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 in interesting. No, yeah, exactly. And I I liked the switch up that they did compared to the Eastern split where Nathan was playing with Kim and Christina was playing with Dalbier. Mm -hmm. I thought because originally when this team first got picked, I had originally gone with what they went with with the Eastern split is how I thought the teams were going to shake up. But then after watching this weekend, I think this switch up actually worked a lot better in their favor. I think um, I think Nathan and Christina are too much alike with their style of play. That mm -hmm. that's what was causing all the miscues in the Eastern split, where Nate playing with Kim, um, I thought was a, a better dynamic than the same thing. Dalbier playing with Christina, and then the fact that they had Darren there and inserting Darren into to, uh, he only played two games. He gave Nate a break. He gave Dalbier a play a break. Mm -hmm. Right, and I thought that was perfect because now you don't have to worry about Delbier hurting his back, right? Nathan's gonna be Nathan's gonna be fresh, right? Like even like, and that's what those subs are for. It's just to give that each player that kind of one game break where they can you know rehydrate, refresh, and then go. And like I thought, Delbier played way better in the matches I saw him play. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, was, you you, you I, could I, tell I, he was not he was not being hindered by a, a stiff back. Well, even even Kim, like you look at Kim, the the the. the uh, last weekend was not the same Kim that we were seeing last time. Also, yeah, oh yeah, it de definitely has healed from her hamstring injury that she suffered at the CPA tour. Yeah, I'll, I'll say maybe the first day, uh, maybe something is uh, she's still a little off. But the second day, you definitely see oh Kim, Kim, that's the normal Kim that we're we're looking at right now. Yeah, and that, that's over, game over. You're not gonna win. Yeah, I wonder if she was a little tentative to seeing how the hamstring was gonna react, mm -hmm. and then one because I yeah because like I. I, she surprised they surprisingly played a bunch of the teams I was watching the first day, so I got to see them quite a bit. And yeah, I found as the day went on, she got more and more and more aggressive because she's like, yeah. Okay, no, the hamstring's good, I can go all out. Yeah, she's pushing that, she's now pushing more. And at the first for a couple of games, you can she's just a little bit more sluggish, uh, trying to maybe baby baby at her, her at, at hamstring, but after that, it's like she's going full throttle, so yeah. So I think I, uh, they they did they did play really really well uh, really well. Uh, could it be even better? Maybe I would say maybe they could have won even more uh, even more games. But I will say even uh, with what what they 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 done, that's a big improvement from what they they have done in the Eastern split. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know, I know they I know they were definitely disappointed with the Eastern split how that went. Um, and and like, a, a six and four record is a lot is a lot is a lot better. Um, Probably one or two of those games, they probably could have uh, could have pulled out a win if it wasn't for like one or two little mistakes. But that's that's pretty much what it is at this pro level. One or two little mistakes can cost you an entire game. So mm -hmm. and not, not just the match. So exactly. So uh, I was just gonna say to complete yeah. the current standing. So so uh, everyone everyone knows. Ob obviously, Alliance is uh, is on on top right now. The thirteen and six roller at uh, not far behind twelve and seven. And then that, and then we kind of have a three-way tiebreaker: uh, Brewers at ten and eight, Smash and ten and ten and nine, and Pronghorns at ten and nine. So it, technically, there's like kind of a tiebreaker. And then we have the rest, kind of. Uh, uh, Wolverine and United are kind of, kind of also a tiebreaker. They are both of them at eight and ten. 
And unfortunately, Rush is the uh, the one that's a little lagging behind from uh, three and fifteen. Unfortunately, yeah. I'll just say, uh, we, if you look at our uh, prediction that we we first we first uh, did, um, so and, and uh, our assessment on uh, Toronto Toronto United are pretty wrong, unfortunately. Yeah. So we, we, well, we and hope- like we said, we were taking a mulligan because that was, prediction was made with Anna Blatt on the team. Yeah, obviously, right. So that that that, that was the that's the problem. Other than that, I think our assessment was uh, not too far behind, except me putting the Brewers at last. Uh, <laughs> that was my probably my fault, uh, <laughs> not not knowing the teams pro- proper properly. But other than that, I'll say Andrew's uh, prediction is uh, pretty on point, except the Lions. Uh, well, yeah, and 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 the Brewers. I had the Brewers a little bit lower as well. Yeah, um, too. But if, if if we take if we take the Toronto United out, mm-hmm. um, because we both stuck them in the top two, if we say if we pump punch them down to seven and move our seven and whatever up, we're pretty we're pretty close. And like for how close all these teams are, like aside from the Lions and the Rollers right now, who are up in front of everyone, mm-hmm. everyone else like ten and eight, ten and nine, ten and nine, eight and ten, eight and ten. Those are all like stupid, stupid close, right? Mm-hmm. So all those teams are kind of like on a good day and almost interchangeable of who's going to win what game. And I think everybody has aside if we, if we don't count the rush and like, like I said, the rush are still, they made, they made a massive leap this weekend. I lo- I want to see what they look like come the Western split. If they can, if they can build off of this performance and yeah, at least yeah. get themselves a little bit, like they might not get out of eighth, but I want to see, like, I would love to see like if they're, cause they're going to play what they're going to play. Um, they're gonna play ten games, 10 games. on, on yep. the Western split. I would love to see like a five and five, or even like a six and five, or not sorry, or, or like a six and four mm-hmm. type of thing, right? If they can, if they can do that, I can. I would consider that like an ex, a success. Now you're still gonna get stuck playing the Lions or the Rollers come Championship weekend, but if you can, if you can bump yourself up to like a five and five record come the Western split, then you are starting to ride high and you're starting to build towards that championship weekend right so uh, and and in some ways i will say they have a slightly home court advantage now because now uh, every, every every everything now shift to to the west now so yeah. they don't need to travel as uh, as much so I, I, will, I will say they have slightly better better advantage now so uh, i will expect the western team have a little bit be a little bit more fresher this time yeah, because I know. Yeah, because on for example, the rush. The only two players who aren't from Western Canada is Jordan and Sophia. Mm-hmm. Um, for the Wolverines, uh, Jonas and um, actually all their their uh, aside, sorry, Pato, Sabrina, and Joel are from West. The other three are from East, so they're kind of split. Uh, Pronghorns, um, they're like three. Uh-huh. And, they're, well, Pronghorns are three and three as well. Because well, Jeff, uh, yeah, it's, but it's, I just yeah, think, huh? yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, because I was going to say, because Brad, uh, Matt, and Caitlin are all from West, but then the other three are from the East. So, um, yeah, I think the team that's most West actually is um, is the Rush. The Rush, exactly. Yeah. Uh, even even so, the Broncos as well, they're playing yeah. at their facility. <laughs> Basically, Brad is playing at his facility. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That, but, that's but, then, but then again, so is Haddo, so is Kim, so True. is Chris Elaine, right? Uh, you might as well include Joel. Now, Joel's from Red Deer, but he trains in calgary with all these guys mostly. yeah true uh, right so so way. like any, anybody from western canada with the exception of like nathan and dalbeer and sabrina <laughs> all train at the calgary pickleball center so yeah the, uh, so they're all gonna know how that court bounces how like where the where the good spots are to hit and stuff right so exactly. so that and um so that'll be that'll be interesting yeah, it's gonna be, be a good good dynamic to to uh, to watch. Yeah, so, but if we get if we uh, get games like we got this weekend, it's gonna be a great weekend. Mm-hmm. And what what was what was the date again? Um, um, For Calgary, um, Calgary is August seventeenth and eighteenth. Okay, nice. And uh, we have one more news to to announce. We na- we now know where's the championship. So the championship is now at the EPC. Which we call the Edmonton Pickleball Center that has been has now officially been opened, and when it's going to be? It's going to be August thirty first to September second. Sweet. So hopefully, I have a day off of work and I can make it for at least. I, I would prefer the Sunday because <laughs> then you're seeing the final <laughs> cut, right? Um, I've used up all of my RTOs, so I'm not going to be able to actually book it. 
Well, it's the second is a, a, a federal holiday, is it? That doesn't matter for rig work. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. They 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 they, 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 they work. I don't care. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they they try they try to avoid it because it is like double pay, mm. right? But on like for example, on can I did work on Canada Day. Mm, I see. So, um, but um, and I don't. Yeah. So, just for clarification for people, I don't work on rigs. I um, I do pipeline inspection, so I scan pipes when they're pulling stuff and stuff. But I'm an. It's an on call job, so I have to use requested time off for uh to go to tur tournaments and stuff so i've already used all my august ones up because of uh tournaments i'm playing in so gotcha uh yeah it's 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 the labor day uh, long weekend yeah and i know and i know um most most uh jobs that i would go do they try to avoid working on the stat because they got to pay the rig workers extra they have to pay the inspectors extra and stuff like that so they usually try to avoid they'll try to go for like the two like the, the tuesday or right. whatever right so so they'll avoid like the, they'll try to avoid the sunday and the tuesday they try to avoid those two days mm -hmm. so if i don't have a job sunday i'll probably be making a beeline to edmonton to go watch uh nice to go watch the championship weekend so i'm keeping fingers crossed for that yeah well i'll i'll definitely be there well what well who knows if you if, if, if you're certified is. after provincials you might even be ref in there maybe Maybe we'll see. Let's keep fingers crossed for that. Yeah, quick finger cross for me, please. <laughs>
taking that 70% of the court. But at the same time, you have James Nadovich also who's the alpha male. So you're like, whoa, okay, what's going on? Who's going to really take that ball? So the, there's a, a it's kind of a, a lot of miscommunication in weird dynamics. Who's going to do the reset or who's going to who's going to going to bounce at the ball? So that was kind of interesting. So who won? It was Stasgrud and Patrick, and so BH win win against uh, Dylan Fraser and JW Johnson. And uh yeah, another blowout, uh, 11 7, 11 7 and pickle. You're like, what is going on? So that was uh that was interesting. And uh Stasgrud and Patrick played late lights out. Uh for to and the other thing to be honest, Stasgrud was training with uh, uh uh Dylan Fraser and JW all the time, right? So they know what to do. So that that I think that 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 also make, make makes a difference. And woman side, uh, again the unbeatable duo of Waters and and, and Parental what what again against uh Breck and Rob Backer. Um let's go to the one of the one one of the last ones which is the PPA San Clemente it was a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was kind of, that was another pretty uh, inter uh, interesting uh, 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 tournament. So again, Emily Waters won her her triple crown, not Ben Johns again. Like uh, Ben Johns did, did uh, oh, this time only have one one uh, one gold medal. So the mixed double they won against Parento and Alshon. That which is a new dynamic. So, and congrats to Alshon. He just came back from surgery, and then he already made made it to the final. So, congrats to him. Um, on on the on the men's side, the Johns got beat again. So, the the Johns got beat beat in, in the quarters by Telus and Patrickwin. So, you're like, oh, what is going on with the Johns brothers? Is it time for Ben Johns to dump his uh, brother? Uh, it's getting talk a lot of talk because. For uh, Ben was still playing his his game, but you can see uh, C CJ is uh, ha, ha, is coming down. Unfortunately, like people has been picking on on him, he's not being able to do his uh, regular reset and 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 uh, as good as before. He's still very a very good resetter, but not as good as before. I I, I felt like people are able now to be figuring their uh, them out more and more. So they. They either have to do do some uh, uh do or do some changes or either maybe uh to split it up uh with a, a, another partnership so we'll we'll see how it goes who won dylan fraser and jada who beat telus and patrick Quinn. so uh patrick Quinn went for the, his uh, sec second final finals uh in the row and now the number one male team is not the johns anymore it's the is Dylan Fraser and J.W. Johnson, who is the number one team in in, in, in PPA. So uh, con congrats to them. Uh, women's side, not nothing uh, nothing surprising again. The unbeatable un un duo is still there. Uh, the Enderly Waters and Parento who beat uh, Tina Pisnik and, and, and Jesse Ir Irvin. Um, singles, we have a little little surprise. Chris Haywood beat, beat Federico Stas Group. That that was a very very entertaining game. Uh, now you you can see some like we call, like they're starting we starting to see that trend the single specialists and the double specialists because Chris Haywood is the uh, he basically he did play a little bit of doubles but he mainly plays singles and you can really see uh, he's basically be able to overpower pe people com uh, compare uh, compared to other pe uh, uh, other players like you have Fed Fed, Fed is very good. Uh, as a single part, uh, 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 single player. Uh, don't we uh, just want to mention also he uh, Chris Haywood beat uh, uh, Ben Johns, and he used the same tactic against uh, Federico, not getting into cat and mouse game, not letting them be able to dig it. Every ball was taking out a uh, volley, so you just be basically cut out the time uh, for Federico or and and Ben to be able to 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 slow the. the to the game down he's like i'm not letting you do that i'm gonna drive every freaking ball every ball that's good yeah, even it's gonna be low i'm gonna take it out of volley so uh, that that make, makes it a big big difference and and singles and the lead beat uh, per, uh, uh catherine parental again unfortunately so uh yeah the, for for women's women's game uh we're we're not even and, and the least just miles ahead uh, uh anyone else
uh, anything was interesting during 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 this implementation? If you people are uh, uh, following the means of pickleball uh, Instagram, uh, unfortunately, um, our Canadian Jeannie Bouchard um, and stuff actually, but she, what what she was uh, doing is she's trying to chase a drop shot from uh, from uh, or the ball was nicking from the net, and she's trying to chase it down, but she just run through the net and then just broke the almost broke the uh, broke the whole net unfortunately so it was kind of a kind of uh, interesting things to 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 say, to say even even the the opponent was laughing okay what's going on but any, anyway that's a quick wrap up uh, on the ppa uh there won't be any any new ppa uh, the uh, in the month of july the next ppa will be in kansas city in august so but next week we have the M, uh, M, mlp uh again so uh so it's gonna it's gonna take a little uh, it's gonna uh, the pro scene hat will have a little bit of a break right on all right so oh wasn't there a rule change in the mlp as well yeah the mlp came back to uh, they, they just revert back to what they uh, almost revert back to what what the original is because what happened with the mlp is they took out the freeze and then um they start they start the cops uh, uh uh run running the, run running a little bit there differently and the pros didn't like it that they didn't have to freeze so now what what happened what happened is you have they brought brought back the freeze at twenty four. You still have to win to to twenty five, and it's still it's instead of win by one, now it they brought back to win by two. So to make it a little bit more more interesting, uh, Dream Breaker is still still at uh, twenty one. But one uh, distinct um, rule change for like people like me, Deco Bar and um, uh, Ty Tyson McGuffin. The serve do not have a height restriction. So if we remember in this uh, in this uh, in, in a volley serve, there's three uh, there's three rules. It needs to be below the waist. You have to have an upward motion, and the tip of the paddle has to be be below uh, your your uh, your waist, right? So one of the compon component, which is the below the waist, was taken off from MLP. So basically, if you're super tall, you basically toss the ball, and then just you can almost uh, serve at shoulder height. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we got some we got some updates on the uh the centers opening up in Edmonton. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, did you? So Andrew, did you visit the Padel Zone or uh, did you heard about them? Uh, just off of what you said, Vic. I didn't. Uh, by the time uh we were done on in Spruce Grove on the uh on the Sunday, it was time to head home. So I didn't get a chance to drive down drive down there and check it out. Maybe I'll check it out on my way home from uh from uh red deer or on the way down to red deer we'll mm. see yeah just check 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 them out uh for myself i did went to their opening day on the 22nd of uh, of june um they're located in a in industrial complex uh and a catch, actually a pretty remote area in in Nisku. like there's a, a basically absolutely nothing around and it's almost like there's some part of what that in order to access there you have to go through a, like some sort of gravel road so we're like what the heck am I am I lost or something? And so it was kind of, kind of interesting. So how how uh, they they open up? Uh, personally, unfortunately, I'm sorry, P Padel Zone. I am not recommending people to go <laughs> go play there. The uh, uh, simple reason is uh, the court uh, the court um, the how the court are oriented are not uh, are not suitable unfortunately for for pickleball so how they did did it is they they put four uh, four courts but there's three courts that is let's say uh going straight and then there you have one court on 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 the back go, going horizontal which is all uh which, which is impeding on two of the courts that's uh, that, that's going straight so basically the people that are uh, like let's say i'm i'm trying to receive serve from uh, those uh, three vertical uh, court, I'm I'm actually standing into the the, the court that's uh, uh, going horizontally. So you're like, uh, what? what what's going on? And same same to the ball. If the ball, let's say I miss miss the serve or anything, the ball's gonna go directly in, in into that court that's going horizontally. So uh, there's no this this almost like in, impossible to uh, to play uh, properly on on uh, with that uh, court configuration and on top of that none of the court has dividers so the ball runs all over the place 
third thing is um, how the court surface is. So the court, the, uh, the courts are actually uh, pretty uh, rubbery, but uh, outside of the pickleball court, they're just uh, norm, normal, normal polished concrete. So basically, <laughs> you're sliding. Yeah. It, it, so when when you're when you're not on the court, your 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 feet cannot cannot uh, cap zero grip on onto those areas. So that makes it very difficult uh, for for the people that's actually on a higher level that play, that requires uh, to, you to be able to to run all, all, run all over the uh, like left and right and going outside the court. It's unfortunately it's not not very feasible. So uh, un unless they uh, either take off that fourth court or just place it somewhere else, it is not it is not a good configuration for for for, for a pickleball facility. Um, uh, switch over to the padel side. They have two padel court. Uh, the, the the padel surface is actually they use a kind of a carpet. Um, Grass that kind of comes on surface, so it kind of, kind of was interesting. So uh, on, on my on my knees, it was it was very perfect because it was like very cushiony, and uh, playing that pedal was definitely uh, de de definitely pre pretty fun. So uh, the ball bounced around the the, the, the walls, and uh, the way that you you hit hit the balls the, is differently. So, but I, I will say they should have maybe. Uh, put more pedal courts instead of trying to do a mix and match of uh, pickleball and, uh, and pedal. And uh, the uh, one more criticism I will say they they probably the other area where they have the sitting and the kind of bar area I felt it was too big. They, if they they could have like maybe do it like uh, instead of doing that big, make it like a almost like a sec um, uh, one level up instead. So they can they can save a little bit of spa space from from that side. That will probably help their like court surface to to maybe have more pedal courts or more pickleball courts. That 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 will say I will say my my, my biggest criticism to to the facility. Yeah, because it almost sounds like what they should have done is have three pedal courts and maybe only stick like one pickleball court or two at tops. Or maybe three. Just I always say three pickleball courts is enough. Don't don't try yeah. to. They try to sneak a, a fourth one in there, but there's oriented completely like in the way of the other three. So I don't know. yeah, so yeah, and like because you're the pedal center, you, yeah, you think you'd stick a third court in there instead. Like I know pedal hasn't picked up yet in North America the way it has over in like Europe and stuff, but uh, it's it's going to be common. Yeah, exactly. But especially you call yourself pedal zone, right? You should be focusing more on pedal than just on pickleball. Yeah. So that that that's uh, how how I felt. Um, uh, next up, uh, uh, the EPC Center o o o opening. I was uh, I was lucky that uh, I was able to go go to the grand opening of the the e EPC. It was on the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth of June. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, and Andrew, you're gone, so <laughs> could you could make it. It's okay. You can you can come back to see see, see us more often than you now, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. I still haven't even been to the South Hub yet. Like, <laughs> I I just keep getting screwed out of being able to go to these places for some reason. Every time I, every time Irene gets to go, she gets to go play in all these awesome centers. And like the I, I've been to the Hub in Saint Albert, and that's it. Oh man, no. I we we definitely should should play. So the, so the EPC, I'm definitely recommending it. Uh, it so. Uh, it should it should be just one one day of grand opening, but they they have a huge demand. They so they open up a second day uh, on the twenty seventh uh, instead of the original twenty eighth of uh, of June. So uh, a lot of people say is ve they are very the way they they designed it was very uh, similar to the Calgary facility center uh, uh, they, uh, over there, except. They did uh, put much better sound uh, soundproofing, so everywhere has soundproofing. So the the ball, the, the ball sound does not sound as loud in in into, into the facility. And obviously, they have more courts, right? They have 15 courts now. Uh, uh, why, why I say 15? Because there is four more courts only on uh, on on the wo uh, wooden gym, which they they use it sometimes for, for uh, volleyball facility. Uh, and though the wooden gym is completely kind of uh, separated from all the the other pickleball courts, so you're not gonna hear anything from from volleyball from from that side. So which uh, I think that was a good thing they uh, they did. 
uh, the courts are pr really greedy. I, I felt so. If people that likes to put a lot of spin, that server is gonna grab like crazy. So well, that's you're the, not watching video. I'm rubbing my hands together right now, like Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> He's liking it. You see that? Just liking it. Uh, I felt the uh, the AC uh, the AC system was working great because on that day, they, well, the uh, there's a lot of people go, go, going in, and there's a lot. Uh, they they have to open the doors to to let people in, and they, um, and everything. And it was cool, still cool enough that uh, um, I was not sweating that much down there. So it, that was prompt to them. Um, on the opening day, they. They let everyone have a kind of open play. Uh, there's a couple couple of uh, top pros was uh, was playing uh, playing there also. So uh, I was pop to them to to have the, some some pros over there play uh, playing with uh, with uh, with people. Uh, they offer free food, free drinks, free beers, and then uh, Sean Sonigo, the uh, which, uh, which he 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 has the, his own. Um, Kind of, kind of singing companies called called the Grand Dueling Dueling uh, Piano Show. They they did the did some some sort of uh, as 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 singing and show from uh, eight eight to ten, which is uh, which is very good. So uh, I'll say that they will that will be probably my primary facility to 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 go uh, the this winter. And no know, knowing that uh, they have that much amount of court and the courts are look, look, looking looking nice and they have tons of tons of space to to uh to walk walk around and you even just hang hang around so i uh I'll, I'll def definitely the pe people that doesn't know where where to go just check this uh, place out before and then you can make your own, own decision and i actually want to also make some correction on the my last podcast because on the membership i will say well, okay why there's a big jump from 15 dollars a month to a 60 dollars a month well because there is something i miss what was what happening is that 60 60 dollars a month uh yes you get uh five uh the the hourly rate is five five four five dollar and, and fifty but also it that uh, monthly rate also includes 10 hours of play time so your if you you run out of that ten hours of play time, then your additional play time is five five or uh, five five fifty an, an hour. So I will say if you you're you're, you're saying I'm committed to go play play this area uh, at, at EP, uh, EPC, you probably rather just get that sixty dollars a month because it's almost paid by itself. You you already have 10, 10 hours included in there. Uh, so same same thing for the hundred and fifteen dollars a month. It includes twenty hours of play time, and the hundred fifty dollars a month it includes actually thirty minutes of play time. Plus, uh, if you, uh, they have some open play hours, they're all now free for for that uh, mem membership. Obviously, unless you're you, you're retired and you don't have nothing to do, probably that hundred fifty may may make sense. But like for me and you, that uh we have to oh, oh uh, we have to work i will i will say that uh sixty dollars a a month may make a little bit more sense and what about the uh the yeg how's that one going yeah the yeg um i don't know what's going on <laughs> so they, what um the uh, ali and, and jorge uh, from treco pickleball they did um, uh did some programming for for the month of august but however, they just uh, they just sent out the email uh, to people that that was uh, subscribed to the, the newsletter that they're now delayed till mid August uh, for for their grand opening. So we're like, oh, what's going on? They're still still in delay. I, I have a I have a feeling the more they're delaying right now, they better just open in October. People are not gonna go go in and play play inside in anyway at that at that point and unless we have like this Alberta. 35 degrees weather but uh, like uh till till august other other than that people will be sticking playing out, out outdoors and until probably the october time frame yeah exactly and and besides that's where they're going to make the big bang for their buck anyways is like that october through to like february march type thing mm -hmm. agree just a quick uh quick couple uh, equ equipment so i got two two new paddles yeah two new paddles so i have the uh, spartus uh, uh, apollo which is the we call the um the pizza pan, pan, uh, fry pan um i don't have it with me but anyway that's okay people that have uh, is with me have saw saw it already 
Okay, br- bring it bring it to uh, Red Deer uh, next weekend so I can take a picture of you with it. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll bring it over. So uh, that was uh, actually a, yeah, that was a pretty interesting uh, 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 paddle because uh, it was a we call it wide body pa- paddle. At first, I was thinking mm, I like my elongated shape paddle, so I was like mm, maybe I, I I don't like it. And the more I'm playing with it, the more it's becoming one of my primary pa- paddles because first of all. People were saying on the internet, that's a control paddle. I'm sorry, it's not a control paddle. It's not a power paddle, but I will say it's an all court paddle. It's, it has uh, enough pop uh, to, to, to launch the ball and it's much, very controllable. The other thing that Y body is like perfect for a reset. Like, I, 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 I don't know what, like, uh, so some, some of the, the smash and the, the people was hitting at me. I just putting my paddle right there, and I got I I I was re- returning that reset like perfectly back 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 to back to the kitchen. I was like I was just some some of the time I was like, amazed. I was like, what? How how did I do that? And I will say that Y body shape it actually helps you to to con- control and get that um, because you have a bit, a bigger sweet spot too, right? So that helps a lot for your uh, for for your for your reset. On on top of that, this paddle has a very low swing weight. It's right in, into the 110, which is very, very low. And uh, at, at the hand battles, you're not going to lose with this. You, 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 you're able to uh, hand speed a, a, everyone with this. I have a feeling if, you, uh, Andrew, you try it, uh, you try it, uh, you try it at Red Deer, you'll probably like this paddle. Oh, no, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely give it a try. Then I'll, uh, you know, take a picture of it, send it to Anivia, and then they can make me a paddle like that. Yeah, they, well, they they should because that give you give them a different other variety, right? And and that and a lot of I think uh, some new companies are actually coming with this paddle, uh, this this shape paddle. So yeah, that that's one of them, Spartus Apollo. Uh, another paddle will be coming soon. I, uh, uh, I'm still waiting from from the mail. Is the uh, bread and butter uh, Fat Boy? Yeah, Fat Boy. That's what you call. You, you hit it right. So uh, it, it because uh, it's I, I'm so I'm happy with any creative names whatsoever. It, add, it just adds more to pickleball. I'm I'm tired of you know six point zero Gen three and just like <laughs> okay, give it give us some good names. That's why like when you said like Shogun and like all this other stuff, I'm like oh, I said if they got their marketing really, they would have had a little notch to like loop your slip onto a belt so that way you can like unsheath it like it's a sword and stuff like that right like oh, yeah that was great i was like make, make, make it make it fun if you're gonna have fun names like that like i want a, a nice design on the paddle i want some color on the paddle right whether i and for some reason for fat boy i'm thinking yellow like black with some yellow trim or something like that i don't know what it is about no that. actually it's a uh, it's a black uh with a little bit of uh, blue and pink they basically oh, make that, it that's all, even- that's they even make better. it out of like a donut. They basically. Oh, perfect! Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. So, that's so, even, I'll, that's I'll, even show, I'll show you when I if I have it. So, yeah. Kind of, kind of another in- interesting uh, design, and then the eleven six twenty four company also makes to be called the Monarch, which is the same uh, actually uh, same uh, same thing as a white white body uh, paddle, and they come with uh, three different surfaces, either the Kevlar, the uh, the car the, the carbon, and the carbon mix uh, Kevlar on top of it. So that that kind of an, an, an interesting mix gonna be. I will I will say for pe- people that is uh, starting to play pickleball or maybe they're saying, oh, I'm not able to hit my ball as good as before. I want I want something that has a big sweet spot. That's a, a probably an amazing pad- paddle to try because they're not that expensive. Um, and yeah, then if one, you, if, you, if you get that, but bring that as well. I just want to see. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring over and one more paddle I want I want to talk is the Honolulu pickleball company uh, J7K uh, the Sword and Shields uh, J7K uh, is the elongated version is the only elongated elongated uh, Kevlar paddle in the market right now. Uh, this this thing is a power paddle. Uh, be, like people was thinking, oh Kevlar is control. No no no. This is like this is freaking uh, freaking bullet. Okay, it's not Gen three power. But still, this is like it, it hits hard as hell. So that's uh, so I, I, I will say if you if you like power, that probably is a good good paddle. Tremendous amount amount of spin. My um, 
I was, I'll say my criticism on this pedal is the sweet spot being too small. You, you definitely need to put lead tape and try to increase it. And even so, I'm still still having a little bit trouble with uh, with with, uh, with this pedal because of the sweet spot being too too small. Or maybe I'm just uh, I'm just not good enough to hit the sweet spot. That could be too. You need to buy one of those sweet spot paddles where it's just like a little wooden spoon, so you can. Yeah, I, I have one, but anyway, you know, sometimes it is it is what it is what it is. And uh, one more thing I want I want to say, um, if you remember in our last year podcast, we did talk about a company called Reload. So what what is what the company was claiming is they was want to try uh, actually what they do because we we, we know with our carbon carbon fab, uh, fiber paddle, e even though it lasts longer than the than the spray grid, it still phase out, right? So yeah. the the, the com company is trying to say, okay, we can give uh, we, we can give you a refresh of the uh, uh, of the um, paddle paddle surface, so so you don't need to buy a new paddle. This year, the the PIKKL did come with the we call the uh, the skins, the pro skin, so you can put a uh, stick the skin on 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 the on the paddle to get a refresh. Relo actually now comes in, coming in with the same uh, same concept. Like you basically, the paddle is just the base, and then they just gonna ship you like uh, uh, skins. Basically, you're just gonna stick on 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 onto that paddle to re every time you can refresh that grid. It's an interesting concept, but the price is not interesting. So they actually do, uh, you don't buy the paddle. So how, how it works, it, what runs at the membership system. So the first tier is that $25 US dollars, uh, all US dollars uh, a month. They give you one paddle, they give you uh, 12 replacement sheets. So basically six, six replacement sheet total, uh, if you stick uh, front and back. And then, if you want to buy additional paddles, and it's gonna cost you another seventy five dollars. The sec second tier is forty five dollars a month. Still, want, they're gonna give you one paddle. They give you twenty four uh, replacement sheet, which is that twelve, which is twelve replacement total, and sixty dollars for additional paddles. And the most expensive um, uh, tier is the eighty six dollars a month. They give you two paddles. They give you 48 uh, replacement sheet, which is 24 uh, replacement and $60 uh, uh, per month for, uh, for additional paddles, sorry. The paddle itself, nothing spectacular. It's just a Gen, Gen 2 thermal, thermal form paddle. So why am I paying for a membership now <laughs> instead of just buying one paddle? That, that does not make sense. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask that. I was like, what does the monthly membership mean? Like, do you get keep getting sheets as you keep paying this monthly membership because honestly what i would do is i would pay the first month get my paddle get my 12 replacement sheets and then just cancel my membership yeah i don't know how how, how it works I, I, right because i was I, like i was like hey there's i said so i'm paying 25 bucks for what for a paddle and then sheets unless it's like you pay per month and the sheets only show up like one, like the one I, pair I of sheets. That's so, how it works. It, it comes out per, per month. They not. Oh yeah. So the so the twenty so the twenty five dollar per month. They send you your paddle and you're with the sheets already on it, and then you basically get a year's worth of paddles. But each month, that's when the sheets get delivered. Comes in exactly. So uh, so which which forces you to pay? It's it, that still isn't bad. That's only what like just under just under two hundred bucks. Two fifty twelve months. That's no. It's closer to to, to the uh 300 mark, though. that's closer to a 300 dollars mark though okay yeah but but at, at the same time you're like oh i have a replacement sheet for every every uh, uh every month so maybe it kind of makes sense yeah. but at the same time if your paddle has nothing spectacular compared to the others yeah well and all and also yeah. like for for me like also that that thermoform eventually does start to wear out yeah you know like you know what i mean like it's, it's, it doesn't matter how much you keep changing your the face eventually you start to lose your sweet spot on some of these paddles right like, mm -hmm. like so yeah okay i keep getting fresh sheets but then all of a sudden the pop and my paddle is gone yeah i don't know your core is crushed let's say or yeah. your, your your core your your core now has a dead spot what you're gonna do <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah i'm a little confused with the membership thing i'm guessing that's what it means is that you get a new sheet every month yeah and that's, uh, and, that's, that's how. and that's what you're paying so like basically you're paying less up front to get the paddle right away mm -hmm. and then you're paying more down the line for like replacements 
things. And I guess depending on how much you play and how quickly you wear out paddles, it's not like I could see like the 25 bucks a month. Like you just do a one year subscription or whatever. And if yeah. you're someone who only plays like once or twice a week and then say you don't play a lot in the winter or whatever, like I could see that not being not being a bad idea. But if you're someone like you or me who's playing like three plus times a week, like I don't see that being like, yeah, the, the new surface is cool, but like I'm going to wear out that paddle pretty quickly. Well, uh, the other thing is uh, the competition, right? Uh, like, like I said, the the, the other company is called PIKKL is doing exactly the same thing, but not, uh, and it's not the membership base. The the paddle is about one hundred fifty dollars US dollars, and their skin is selling for ten bucks. I'm sorry, you're not beating them. No, yeah, you buy your hundred fifty. You buy your hundred and fifty. Maybe buy one extra sheet at the or same. Or I can buy buy the sheet whenever I want basically yeah now i don't i'm not restricted like uh, having them to send, send it to me i can buy whenever uh, whenever i want whenever i i, I need yeah and do, just be be done be done with it right so like 150 dollars a paddle i think most of people can't afford it like it's not 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 affordability problem yeah exactly and like i said unless it's unless it's for someone who's like really budgeting yeah, yeah but okay, even, 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 even so like, yeah, yeah even though it like in the long run it ends up being way more expensive and like honestly i don't know if i'd go through that many sheets that quickly mm -hmm. so i was like it was like a weird a, a weird marketing i was like if some you have a, something uh in, in the competition that's much cheaper why are you still doing this and it yeah was, it, was, it was almost like they had this idea they took too long to implement it and then another company came out with the same idea and, exactly. and and advertising it better mm -hmm. and and actually beat them to it basically. yeah and anyway so yeah uh still to come i have a couple more uh so next week actually after the provincial i'll, I'll be going to minneapolis i have a dental conference so i'm gonna pick up some some stuff out, out, out there there's the amazon prime day so i'm gonna pick, pick up a lot of, uh, a lot of goodies from, uh, from the states uh there's three main paddles i'm 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 picking probably picking up is the uh bread and butter fat, uh, fat boy um the paddle tech esq uh, uh carbon so what what is this paddle is is a different it, it's the same as the enderly waters paddle but have a longer handle so a lot of people was complaining like uh the enderly paddle is super strong super powerful but like the uh the handle size is like big uh length is like five inch it's like that is tiny no like i i put one hand into it i was like where am i gonna put my second hand like a two-handed filler is like there's no way you can put a second hand in there so that and this paddle i think it has a 5.5 in inch handle so that that will the, that will help help for players that that's a two-handed so it's gonna be an interesting paddle I will, i'll pick up and the uh try uh, azure uh that will, i'll be also uh, pay, picking up um i did try it a uh, lot long ago some some people in in uh in sing uh sing albert that landed to me um it was supposed to be a power paddle it's a hybrid paddle hybrid shape paddle supposed to be a power paddle but i didn't feel that much powerful and uh the sweet spot is very also very tiny it's another uh a kevlar face paddles but i was like uh anyway but uh so some uh, someone's gonna get uh send send it send it to me so i was like okay i'll just uh i'll just pick pick it up see how how it goes maybe i didn't play enough with it to to give give a better, better impression yeah all right and actually here i'll throw this neat question out for you what is your recommendation for court shoes vicar seeing how we're on equipment corner all right so uh court shoes i do uh i actually give you try to give you three recommendations uh, because I did, I, I did, I did try them. So one, uh, for, first of all, uh, them, if you don't, um, you're, you, you, if you're not bothered being, uh, having a shoe that's heavy, but it has a good cushioning, you should try to, uh, the, the Nike, uh, the, uh, air, uh, the air cage series. So the, uh, the Nadal series, the, this, uh, this one has a very good stability. The only uh, uh, only problem is that it's a little bit heavy compared to uh, compared to the other shoes, and usually it has a pre uh, pretty good sub uh, stability left 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 and left and right, 
And um, the good good thing is that Nike also come always comes with the six month uh, outsole uh, uh, warranty. So if you you wore your 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 outsole within like three months, you can make the claim yeah, for 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 that shoes. That'll be that'll be my number number one pick. My second one pick is the Skechers, the Vi uh, Viper, uh, the Viper Court Pro. So that's the current one that I, that, that I have. Uh, it has a very good cushioning all around, uh, which I which I like. Uh, my criticism on on the on this shoes is the uh, that's more the aesthetic point of view. Is the the top of the shoes usually will wear out very quickly. For some reason, the mesh uh, that they put on on there are not very heavy duty. So if you, especially we are sliding left and right quite a bit on on dinking and stuff like that, it, it does put a lot of pressure on on that front, uh, kind of the um, mid front toe on 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 those area, and is already on my shoes already ripping. So uh, and uh, but overall, the on, on the shoes are doing still doing fine. So I was like, interesting. What like why this? part was ripping and then all the others uh, part is still good and aesthetically it looks bad it looks like oh i i have my my shoe my shoes like have a hose on there and then uh, i've used my shoes like for years i just didn't, didn't change it for, so it's a kind of being interesting so if you don't if don't mind aesthetically that will be another good good shoes to use uh the third third shoes I, I i recommend is the the head the head revolt uh pro the C series um, Chris o Ocean from the Applicable Studio did men mention that uh, that shoes uh, quite quite a bit. I did uh, try try it myself, and indeed it has very good cushioning. And especially if you're going down the states, that shoes most most of the time can go under fifty dollars uh, U U.S. dollars. So which which is a, a very uh, compared to other shoes like the Skechers is almost into a hundred something. Same for the. Uh, Viper well, like, is one seventy five, yeah, Canadian, and uh, yeah. so it's about one hundred and ten US dollars. I know, and the Nike, uh, uh, the Vapor Cage. If you get it at sometimes at the like end end of the season, you can get a, a below a hundred dollars Canadian, but uh, usually don't have much more size left, so it's not easy to get our, our air into that two hundred dollars Canadian. Compared to that, um, the head revolt pole, usually you you get on you could get that on, on under a hundred dollars Canadian pretty uh, pretty consistently. Uh, there's nothing nothing uh, very surprising on on the shoes, but the most important part is the cushioning. It has very good cushioning, so people has like plantar fasciitis and stuff like that. I will say that that's an, uh, another another shoes to try on if you if you don't want to pay, pay too much um, money on there. And same thing, head does has uh, the um, also care uh, warranty for six months. So if you're worried about you're gonna wear out that shoes too quickly, same thing. It does have have that warranty uh, that yeah, get you covered. Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm currently using those Viper Pros right now. I have another pair coming. Unfortunately, it's not going to be here in time for uh, Provincials, but I'll use the ones I got. I got the, I think I have the same ones as you. Like, I, I call them the cotton candy ones because it's yeah. got, like, <laughs> green stuff on them because they're yeah, like the type yeah, yeah. of ones. I do, I do. Um, and say, I'll, I'll say, as someone who's worn, uh, who played basketball for a really, really long time, and that's shoes are the one thing where I don't have a problem spending a little bit extra on just for like, um, cushioning, ankle support, stuff like that. As someone who played a sport where ankle sprains and foot injuries are very, very common, before I got into pickleball, I have out of out of those three because I have I think the only one I haven't tried is head. I do like the cushioning and the Skechers better. I found that most of the time when I wear Nike or Under Armour or any of the usual basketball type shoe uh, companies, it takes me about two or three days to beat the shoe in because mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty much a ten and a half for all sizes but i find with with those shoes i have to wear them for a little bit beat them in whereas i put on those sketcher viper uh, viper court ones and i didn't have to beat them in at all it was like instantly just fit nice but yeah i got the hot pink ones coming but they won't get here until after provincials so ah too bad that's okay for the red deer open i'll be uh rocking hot pink shoes so 
<laughs> when, when you're going down, yeah, Andrew, for, for the provincials? Um, I got to work on Wednesday, so I'm going to leave really early Thursday, and I'm going to hopefully get there by like noon or one o'clock because I am going to be doing some commentary uh, throughout the weekend. Nice. Um, I did have some people lined up to help, um, but a few of them had to pull out because they ended up not coming. I originally was going to have Caitlin Soroka uh, jump on, but um, her and Brad Chapman actually aren't coming now. They had uh, some of the, their partners. Their, some, their partners pulled out. Uh, is it because uh, of CNPL? I was thinking. Maybe. Uh, no, uh, Brad was originally going to play with Joe Williamson, but then Joe pulled out, so Brad didn't have a partner. Um, and then Caitlin was going to play with Lauren, but I think Lauren's down in the States. Oh. So Caitlin pulled out, and so yeah, like Kim Layton's playing with Hatto in the uh, in the mixed. Interesting. Now that Brad, now that Brad and Caitlin aren't going to be there, so originally I was going to have Caitlin on. Um, to do some commentary, uh, but she's out. Uh, you're refing a bunch, yeah. so you're I'm probably not going to be able to help. Um, so, yeah, well, Friday might be able to help. Friday, I technically not going to be uh, I'm not scheduled to, to, to ref, so uh, but I'll. I I told the um, the head referee I just want to do some practice games, so he he, he might be able to uh, give me a, a couple of practice game, and then after that I can probably jump and do some commentating as needed. Okay, right on. Yeah, because so far by the looks of it, it's pretty much going to be me, and then if I'm playing, it'll just be the straight stream with just like the scoreboard for mm -hmm. on the uh, on the pickleball Alberta uh, YouTube channel. So. Um, so yeah, so I'm not playing Thursday. So as soon as I get down there, I'm Irene's basically going to drop me off at the court. So I'm going to walk over to the booth and probably start commentating for the rest of the day there. Now the Thursday one's going to be over pretty early. I want to say like four or five o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's all like the 55, 60 plus divisions. Yeah, I'm I'm refing on the whole Thursday. I remember. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah. Ref. So so yeah. So I'll I'll see you there, and then maybe uh, maybe after the games, or we'll get we'll play some rec games or something because I know yeah. they'll be open for that. Nice. Um, and then Friday, I'm playing men's. I think mine starts at like 10.45 a.m. Okay. Um, so then that'll probably be, it'll be done before the opens either start or fi um, they'll be, they'll be, it'll, I'll be done before the opens are finished. Cause I think both open divisions start at like two o'clock ish. Okay. I see. Something like that. Cause I know Irene's playing in the open. I want to say she, hers starts at two. Gotcha. I'll double, I'll double check. And of course, those times can change, but depending on, you know, how long certain brackets and stuff go. I know mine's going to be around Robin because we only got five teams. Gotcha. Um, I know the women's open doubles is going to be around Robin because they only have four. I can't remember the men's, but I'm pretty sure the men's open is going to be around Robin as well because I want to say yeah, they, they don't have much team either. I, yeah, I, think, I think it's only four. I think it's only four teams. Mm -hmm. if, if I remember correctly. So, um, so yeah, so I'll That's... finish men's 4-0 up, hopefully with a medal. Yep. And then uh, I'll be cheering for you. Yeah, I'll be sh I'll, I'll be yelling on the on, on the uh, on, on the on the commentating. Yeah. So yeah, and then as soon as as soon as I'm done, I'll run into the booth and start doing that. And then on the Saturday, Saturday is going to be a long day. Saturday is going to be a long day. I I think my division is the biggest division at the provincials because I think we have like twelve teams in our bracket. Holy and uh, oh, actually no, I think my. Uh, my mom and my uh, father also are playing in, uh, I don't know, my, not my, yeah, my mom is playing in mix. I think they have like 15 teams, something like that. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, and what's she playing in like the 3-0, 3, -oh, three uh, mix, 60 plus, something like that. And they got 15. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ouch. Oh, we were looking at the team, it's like, ouch. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's good for that, that age category. Yeah, because I, I know they, uh, this year they did a lot more breaking stuff into age categories, like a lot smaller mm. categories. Because, like, yes, my men's 4 0 when I originally signed up, it was like 5 to 49. Now yep. they've done it, um, I think they did 5 to like 36 or 35. And then I'm in like a 36 to like 49 age group. For men's yeah, that, yeah make, make makes it a little bit i i, I feel it makes it a little bit for fair right because like if you're if, if the there's too much of a of a age disparity i'm sorry it's tough like it's, yeah it's difficult yeah there, yeah, there, there is like as much as i want to play against some of those younger kids because i'm still young at heart <laughs> um because I, I want to play against Jacob as much as possible, but uh, Jacob moved up to the four or five anyway, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been playing him in men's um, regardless. But yeah, and then uh, I know for mixed, it's uh, I think that one's like a ten to forty nine, so that's why we have so many in there. And well, and I know Jacob and Shay are in that one. 
So we'll probably end up facing them at some point. Uh, and I'm then actually, I, I'm actually looking, uh, looking right. Yeah, actually, four, uh, no, yeah, three O mix is fourteen teams. Oh wow, yeah. And then oh no, then mix three five fifty and fifty four has fifteen teams. Ouch. Yeah. Well, I I know when me and I read played three five last year, there was sixteen mm -hmm. teams in the bracket. Wow. So. So yeah, so I I do like the fact that they're uh, dividing the age categories a little bit more because I I know for some people who are like on that upper end of forty, mm -hmm. aren't there like I know the the uh, Chris who goes to our club he's forty nine right now, and he's like he's looking forward to next year because then he gets to bump up to 50. that plus he goes yeah I don't have to play those goddamn young kids anymore right? <laughs> exactly because like Chris is in really good shape for a guy who's forty nine, but. When you were playing like a 15 or 18 year old who has limitless energy, you know, and it yeah, starts to where it starts to wear you down a bit. As much as you like the challenge and you want to play the best player possible when you it to, to for the chance to win, it's still it's, it's still, still not, right. So but yeah, and then I know for men yeah, and then I know for men's singles, my division is like 27 or 29 to like 49 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing in like in like the three five or whatever. So same thing. They they divided that up. up. Oh no, actually yeah. no, it's eighteen because Ben Ben is in my division. So I'm in I'm I'm in the lowest I'm in the lowest age division for that. I think they may uh, they might have did it thirty nine then. Did you did you play uh, singles or skinny? Single. I'm not playing skinny. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not that I'm not that old yet. <laughs> wow, well, it's a different it's a different it, dynamic, it, it right? is different and actually to be honest skinny probably plays to my style of doubles play like it probably gives me more of an advantage because i'm because as you know i'm like the reset guy yeah and plus now that i know that rule that you told me i'd be yep. doing that freaking ernie like i'm just going uh, there <laughs> yeah, just con i'd be doing that ernie constantly and i got long ass arms so like i'd be exactly. able to I i'd get and away with your this. opponent's gonna be oh my god <laughs> yeah right i and and the fact that i'm ambidextrous so no matter what side you're on i can just stick that arm out and hit it so exactly but it, it it right now it, skinnies over there so you, yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. i know I, irene hates playing me when we do skinny singles to work on like because we'll we'll rotate we'll place like if we're by ourselves drilling we'll do regular singles one day and then if we the next time we go we'll do skinnies to work on like precision drives and precision drops yeah and uh when i play her in singles it's pretty 50 50 who's whoever's gonna win because irene's very very good a very very good singles player yeah but when we play skinnies i'm i'm pretty much beating her pretty easy because because <laughs> I, I don't have to move as much yeah that's one and then you, you're so big you're covering already like that half side yeah. of the court so it's tough to to get uh to yeah beat you in there and like when irene played skinnies last year at the uh when uh at the um the the whatever it was the spruce grove one she got frustrated with that because they didn't have regular yeah. singles they just did the skinny she got frustrated because normally like she uh, she was in a division where there were some ladies who were like in their 50s mm -hmm. and she's like she goes normally i would just slam it cross court and it'd be over but she goes they don't have to move they just have to sit there and just re and reset the ball every time exactly just right and i was like yeah i said yeah and like for someone like me who's very good at that i was like i'll just keep resetting it dropping it short over the net you'll have to cross court dink i'll cross court dink you'll try to speed it up and i'm just gonna walk over and pick it off right like it's it's one of those ones where it's i kind of find it fun to use as like a drilling exercise or like yeah, as a I practice agree. exercise to work on like your precision drives, your precision drops, especially like your cross court drops and dinks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not as sold on it for competition, more so because I like I like the fact that I when I play full court singles, I can make the person move around. Yeah, because I'm not the I'm not the quickest guy. Like I got good reaction time and stuff, but I utilize angles a crap ton. When right. I play singles, you and like, you're 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 limited on what what kind of angle you can hit. Yeah, right. I'm I'm pretty much going. I'm it's pretty much going right to their hand. So now, like, unless I get up, both of us get up to the kitchen, and I force a hand battle, which then I'm confident I can win. But like, if I'm stuck in the back and they're just hitting hitting it at me, I'm like, the best I can do is a is a nice short third shot drop to get myself up. Whereas if it's full court, I can go you know down the line. I can go cross court. I can drop it in the middle and like make them move yeah. around for it. So it's one of those ones where. I would still say okay if you want to make it for 50 plus go nuts because yeah because like once you get get up higher and higher in age not everyone obviously but when you're starting to worry about that it's very good to still then have that singles element but for for me right now i'm still going to go with singles even though 
that's my most inconsistent event. Like I'm a very hot and cold when I play singles. I'll have a, one day I'll be like lights out and can beat pretty much anybody on the court. The next day I couldn't even beat my son <laughs> type of thing. Right. <laughs> so who doesn't play? <laughs> yeah. And, and then the other thing I find the, the, the other problem with the skinny single is sometimes your brain is like your brain wants to hit at the open court. Right. And then suddenly, Oh, I cannot hit that open. Court. Yeah. Right. Like, ah, like, like you, really want, you really have to like, especially say if you're getting into like volley dinks back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know me. If I'm on, if with especially with my backhand shots, if you if you hit, hit that high enough in the air, my instinct then is to backhand shot it straight down the line in front of me to take yeah, out your to, 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 to where your part to where your partner forward. would to where your partner would be. But now it's like okay, you popped it up, but the best I can do is maybe catch the back inside corner. But then you have time to get back there and get it right. Like I can't finish off what technically is a bad dink. Mm -hmm. but because you only have to cover half the court you you get bailed out by that so it's it's kind of, it's kind of like that double-edged sword there's good stuff you can really really work on really well in skinny singles but then you can get away with a lot of mistakes is yes, exactly and and the other thing that was interesting is like why did they call skinny singles if the rule they now say is not skinny singles mini singles so you're like interesting anyway and it'll be even more mini when it's just straight on like it's all you play <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, because yeah, I I think uh, I'll I'll double I'll double check because skinny sing, single in, in in real terms means that you're just only play, playing straight on. That's what what it means. Skinny singles. Oh, mini wow. sing mini singles means like okay, you 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 can uh, depending on the score, you might be playing playing diagonally or you playing as uh, straight on. So yeah. I I you pro I will say you uh, we probably have to either uh, get some clarification on. Are we playing skinny singles or are we actually playing mini singles? Because some like a lot of people are still confused on, on this yeah. part. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the assumption it's probably mini, but I know the original term that everyone used for that was skinny. So mm -hmm, exactly. Right. So any, anyway, that's the uh, one one of the certified ref told, told me that that's how you make distinction between mini singles and skinny singles. So yeah. And, yeah, and to, and I don't know. To be honest, I'd almost say the straight on only. I would consider that mini because it's like a mini court. Yeah, anyway. Like, but that's semantics, whatever. So, all right. So I think that's everything for today. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's it. Okay, so we're both going to be at provincials. Uh, Victor's going for his level three. Is it? Yes, uh, my but yeah, level three, or people call that the certification. All right, so Victor's going for a certification in refing. So hopefully he gets that. Thank you, thank I'm you. I'm going to attempt. I'm not going to say triple crown because triple that, crown. That, oh. that, 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 <laughs> I've only ever done that once. I've only ever pulled that off once. Irene's pulled it off multiple times, but I've only ever pulled it off once, and that was at Western Regionals in uh, nice. Shit, what was that? 2022. The same, the same year. Me and Irene uh, won gold in uh, the mix 3.0 when uh, when when you guys won. Oh, that uh, that was. Is it the 2021. Is that last year or, or no? No, that was the, that would have been the year before last year. So twenty twenty two then, right? Yeah, twenty twenty two. Yep. 2022. Yeah. So in twenty twenty two at Western Regionals, I managed to get a triple crown. I got the men's the men's three zero, the doubles three zero, and the singles three zero. So now, obviously, we I've moved up. So I'm playing men's four zero, mixed four zero. I'm playing men's three five singles. So now, if me and Irene manage to pull off the win in uh, in our mix. We'll we'll have one gold every provincials we've been to, but we've gone from 3.0 to 3.5 to 4.0. So hopefully we can keep that going, and then wow. next year go for four or five. So four yeah. or five or, or open, depending on how much rankings go up and stuff. Good luck. Good luck to you. I'll I'll be cheering you internally because I cannot show my emotion as a referee. Right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, right. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, for those of you who aren't going, if you want to watch some matches, uh, Pickleball Alberta uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube channel will be streaming the event uh, for all four days. You will hear my voice on there uh, throughout the weekend, uh, a fair bit on Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday after I'm done playing, I'll jump on. So especially for like the open events, uh, we just have the one court. Um, we're trying to have lots and lots of metal matches on there, regardless of the category. So that way you see like the cream of the crop of each division type of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously at the beginning of the day, you'll see whatever match goes on there. But as the, as the days go later and we start getting metal matches coming out, hopefully we can get, you know, bronze gold medal matches and stuff on there. And then like, whether it's 3.0, 4.0 open, at least then you're seeing like, you know, the finals 
type of deal. Is it the same court you're going to set up with there? Yeah, the same court as last year. So that uh, first middle one, as soon as you walk in. Yep. to the to the spot, which is probably uh, for for at least the uh, best viewing one. Yeah, for for Red Deer, that's by far the best the best viewing because you got the three sides, and then if there's nothing going on in that other court right beside, technically you could fill in there mm-hmm. as well. That wouldn't be like you wouldn't be able to fill in there probably till like the end of the day, like so like the last matches of the day. But yeah, yeah, just for how Red Deer is set up, that's probably the best court to go at. If it was like Medicine Hat, it would be like that championship court. Yeah, or if say like uh, yeah, so and then. Because yeah, right now still for Alberta, those are really the only two places that can that can host right now, just for the amount of people. Because we were at what five hundred and sixty this year. Yep, around. Yeah, I think last year we were at like five twenty, so we're getting up there. Like westerns and nationals are up in like the six hundred, seven hundred. So like Alberta yeah. provincials are not that far behind. Mm-hmm. Right. So like five twenty two. Actually, I just checked five twenty two. Five twenty two. Yeah. So. So yeah, so we're get we're getting up there now for uh, um things. So we need we need a spot in uh, in Edmonton area to get like 16 20 courts. Yeah, we're but still waiting for Spo- uh, Spruce Grove. Uh, maybe yeah. we make it anyway. We'll see. Yeah, like other than that we would have to be it would have to be indoors at like say like the Edmonton Pickleball Center or something, right? So mm. maybe and well and if I I would say if you could work out cuz they're really close to the South Hub, right? No, not that much. Not, not that, that much. much. I'll say uh, I'll say the the yank will be closer than the self up. Okay, yeah. So even if you could say do like a joint thing where you say, okay, now and I know that's tough for refing and for volunteers having two separate locations. But well, like, yes and no. I think the uh, on the western uh, western regional actually they have two separate locations for uh, they did it with two separate locations, so it's not unfeasible. Yeah, right. So like if if it was up if it was up to me, like because then that way you have a north, you have a mid, and then you have a south for hosting and until calgary gets a massive complex built like i'm sorry Cal- i'm sorry calgary like the calgary pickleball center is not big enough it's barely big enough for 200 athletes well they actually they have two facilities right they have the calgary pickleball center and they have the yyc they call it, the yyc pickleball what but that? I, I, the yyc pickleball is a little bit like the yank i think they have only seven or eight courts something like that yeah so that still wouldn't be enough then because that even because that's 12 and then that that puts you maybe to 20 max. Yeah, and that's like 20 you need like I know like when Regina did nationals and did western regionals they had 20 courts in the in, in the, the um center the and then they had center, yeah. they had the, then they had the 10 yeah. 12 courts over in the actual hub itself. Mm-hmm, exactly. Right? And okay, even then like 30ish. Yeah, so you're board yeah, you borderline almost 30 courts, right? So it's like that like once you like provincials you could get away with 20 20 to eight, like 18, like 16 to 20 courts for provincial right now with the 500. Like, if you cap it like below 600, the moment you start getting close to 600 plus, you yeah, need like it, almost 30, you need like 30 courts. Yeah. Un- unless we have something built like the, at uh, when I went to the US Open at Naples, US Open, they have 64 courts anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and, <laughs> unfor- and unfortunately, I don't think you're going to be able to convince anyone to do that in Alberta. Um, like I said, unless it's like Calgary area, just because weather. Yeah. Unless you're sure. unless you're gonna have say like yeah, do do like say say even if you pulled off 30 courts and like 15 of them are covered. Yeah. And like covered or, and like yeah. winterized covered yeah. type of thing, right? Like then you can be like, okay, well, we spent all this money on this giant facility, but even during winter, at least 15 of the courts will still be able to get lots of people in, right? Like for the three months, four months, five, like if we're lucky, five months that we get for outdoor play. Yeah. Right. A 30 court facility is probably not going to be feasible for anyone unless it's like a billionaire who just is able to burn money. Exactly. Uh, so it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Unless uh, or unless you you have ton, tons of money and then you can buy a Costco and then just dump, dump all the courts in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Some problem is, is when has a Costco ever shut down? Like you'd be better off finding like a Lowe's or like a maybe like an old Canadian tire facility or something. Well, there's there's a Lowe's that I shut down. That's next yeah, I know you. I said you said that last podcast too. I was like, oh, I'm looking at it every day. I was like, why there's no pickleball court in there? Why there's no pickleball court? Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. But yeah, so uh, yeah, well, so, so uh, we will probably do a podcast if not next week after provincials, the week after that, depending on schedules, and we'll do a full recap of the provincials. Uh, we got the uh, we got a little bit, a bit of a break here before the CMPL uh, Western split because that's mid August, and then the championship weekend is like two weeks after that, so we'll be popping some out there. 
Um, I know I'm doing after provincials. I'm doing the Red Deer Open. Are you doing anything after the uh, after provincials, Victor? I'll be roughing at the uh, Western uh, Regionals, so might be able to give you a little bit of insight. How 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 is it at uh, at Vernon, BC? Um, I think I will be roughing at Red Deer op Open only on the Saturday and Sunday, and then at the last uh, event I'll be playing is the St. Albert uh, Pickleball Party, which I'm playing with Lester. I think that will be my last tournament of the year. Yeah. I do have one in Prince George in like on like the 22nd ish of August. It's like an MLP style or nice. CMPL style tournament. And it's going to be, um, and it was funny because when they sent out the uh, invite, they sent it to the club. Okay. And it was like the club had to approve who was going it's like you're representing the club oh. type of thing so it's me and irene and then chris uh who you played against and yep. then uh, nicole from our club so chris is so me and irene obviously are the young pair on that team and then chris is uh 49 and nicole i want to say is like 52 but nicole is like a really good 4.052 player and her and chris play together all the time and then of course me and irene play together all the time so nice. hopefully we can go and do a really good showing there because we'll probably be playing against a couple teams from uh, i think there's a team from grand prairie club going i think there's a couple uh clubs around prince george um that area of bc ish uh mm -hmm. sending some players so we'll get to go uh play some people we haven't played before nice it'll be that'll be fun yeah all right. Okay, everyone, we will see you in a week or two uh, with the update. Hopefully, I got some new hardware, and hopefully, uh, Victor's certified. Yes, hopefully, uh, I come with the white shirt. <laughs> there you go. And, see then you we'll see, and then we'll see you on the CNPL stage. Oh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. Ciao. See ya.